Okay. Um, some people wanted to see a special video about um, what it takes to beat DD as an immortal player or something like that. The differences between immortal and DT. So I'm going to try to explain that in a special format. Um, I'm going to look at what the AI does on the two difficulty levels and talk about it. And then I'm going to say what I can do here on Immortal, what I can't do here on Immortal, and what I can do on DD, and what I can't do on DD. I think that's the most practical way to look at this. And I've actually included the debug mode thing to the game, so we can actually look at what each of the AI does. So I don't care what I'm going to play, but we are going to do a little bit of an AI survivor thing, very quickly anyway, on both difficulty levels and look at what exactly they're doing and then talk about it. So we're going to pick six idiots here, um, six play toys to have some fun with. So. Might as well pick our favourites, Shaka and Willem. Yep, we love those guys. Not really, but we can watch them suffer, that'll be fun. Uh, we'll need two warmongers, two religious idiots, and two peaceful guys to have a nice balance here. Don't see much of Pericles, we can include him maybe. Catherine, Angry, Backstabber, yep. Um, this is actually a strong AI, maybe Justinian, and then like cal or something okay we need one more peaceful person to balance it out kind of so instead of catherine we can have like uh, i don't know who's peaceful here who's like a high peace weight maybe frederick frederick's not very good as an ai uh, maybe like darius or something so you have a pretty strong mix of ai here i guess pericles is high peace weight all right you know what put someone in the middle like suleiman for example all right that's pretty good balance here We'll see what happens, what they do. So remember these six guys, I'm going to screenshot it just now. So we know, we're just going to play a little bit of AI Survivor ourselves, just to look at what they're doing and we're going to talk about it. We're comparing Immortal and Didi, that's the idea here, because people wanted to see that, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do a lakes map, because it's like the most easiest map they can all get to each other. Um, it's a fairly big map, but it shouldn't matter too much. We're going to move ourselves to the edge of the world as well, so we're not in the way and get attacked. Alright, Ramses, yeah, we'll play him one day. Okay, so here's how we do it. We go into debug mode, we're on Immortal this time, and we're going to replay it with um, the same AI, but we're going to do it on DD and see what's different after this. So, we go debug mode, and we go world builder. We're going to move ourselves just up here. And we're going to chill out, so we're not interfering. Uh, make sure I don't kill my unit accidentally. Alright, so we're, uh, we are out of the picture here. No one can get to us. Just in case they get submarines or something. There you go. Now we're safe to remove these. Doesn't really matter, we can remove. We can reveal the map for ourselves. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Doesn't matter what we do. Mining, I don't really care. And then we're going to play the game and watch what they do. So, turn one. Now what I need to do is I need to meet all of them and make them friendly, otherwise they're going to come after me and kill me. Why is that a... What the hell's going on here? Shouldn't that be ocean tile? Confused. Yeah, there you go. These should all be ocean tiles. Ugh, they look horrible, the tiles. Maybe I'll just reload this real quick. Um, can I save the game? Yep. I've done a bit of practice of this, but we'll call it, it doesn't really matter what we call this. I'm going to reload this real quick to fix the terrain glitches. Uh, it looks a bit better now. And then we're going to go meet all these people real quick, and then we're just going to go observe them and see what they do. So there's one, there's another, there's another, there's another, there's another, and there's another. Alright, so we should have met all of them. We go diplo mode, we go me, and then we'll make them all friendly with me so they don't get any funny ideas, like Shaka for example. Okay, so they can't attack us, they all love us. Now we can sit back and look at them. So what we want to look at here is, what does the Immortal AI start with? Well, 
The Moto AI start with three archers, a worker, and two scouts, it appears. So he's got a scout and an archer going this way. They've got two archers sitting in the city, and they have a worker sitting in the city. So he's Justinian's problem. Justinian has two pigs, which he can't do anything with until he goes for animal husbandry. Now, he might be an idiot and go for a religion first up, so that might really screw him over if he goes for an early religion and then can't do anything with his capital for a long time. Now, if it was a Didi Justinian, he would have a second settler, and he would be able to go over here, plonk a city down, and because they get agriculture for free, he can start farming it, and he can also set up a road and get some extra research that way. And there's agricultural resources all around him, except in the capital, so that's kind of unlucky. Uh, let's put the resources on. So they're all friendly faces, won't really concern us too much. We're setting this one out now. Look at Pakal, he's got his gold start. Yeah, nice start, buddy. And yeah, and once again, three archers, two scouts, and he's fog busting with his worker. I don't know what he's doing there, but that's interesting. We have Suleiman here, he's again got animal husbandry resources, can't do anything until he gets the tech, so... Yeah, animal husbandry resources actually really suck for the AI, because... They get agriculture for free. They don't always get fishing for free, but... Um, they do get agriculture for free. Now what they'll probably do is, you'll probably see... Um, Justinian farm the pig. Um, because he starts with agriculture and he wants to do something with his worker. So he'll most likely farm the pig. They don't get mining for free. You can actually see what they start with. Uh, did I put the settings on? Right, so we're playing with normal settings. They're not putting on like, any fancy AI survivor settings on. They're going to do everything the normal AI does. Because this is a explanation game. We're trying to relate it to a real game. But you see here, this is the free text they get on Immortal. So Shaka actually gets nothing for free because he already starts with those two regularly. Willem already starts uh, with fishing alone, and then he gets these ones for free. Um, now you get like Pakal. Pakal's pretty strong because he, he starts with those ones, but then he gets gifted these three for free. And Justinian, similarly, he gets the wheel as well. Only Didi AI get the wheel for free. Immortal AI do not get the wheel for free unless they're like a wheel AI like Justinian or the Mongols or something like that. And then Darius, no benefit. And then Suleiman, he gets the wheel because he has wheel and agriculture starting text. Uh, Darius, he's got a... Alright, so he starts with agriculture one way or another and he will immediately be able to farm that with his worker. So that's a nice start for him. We've got Willem, he's gone into the forest with his worker instead of to the rice for some reason. Alright Willem, you're an idiot. Shaka, Shaka's gonna have a rough start as well. No access, oh yeah, no fishing, no animal husbandry. He'll just farm the floodplains though, but he's decided to fog bus with his worker. Okay, so another thing about the AI on high difficulty levels is they have a discount on their units. You can see here, they pay less. They have an odd number of hammers, or even maybe, but a weird number of hammers required to build their units. And they will actually not build warriors um, if they start with archery. They will never build a single warrior. It's interesting, but you will never see them build warriors. They will just build archers because archers are just better. So they get archers for 20 hammers and like workers for 48 hammers. What do we pay? We pay, well, we can check that, uh, yeah. We pay 25 hammers for a archer, and we pay the 60 hammers for a worker. So they get a flat 20% discount. Now, something I've noticed when I've been running my own little AI survivor games myself, because it's entertaining, but something I noticed is they actually get discounts by era. There's something called a pair era modifier on the difficulty levels wiki page, and... No one has any idea what that means, but apparently it's a discount percentage they get as the game goes on. So the DD AI will start with a 40% discount, but what we saw on the end of one of my games, I'm not going to spoil it, was that the AI was getting a 55% discount on spaceship parts, and that's because they have a pair era modifier, and in the late game they're even more overpowered than they are in the start. So, they start with a 40% discount, but it turns out, later on, it'll be a 55% discount, or whatever, by the end of the game. So that's kind of terrifying, like, it just mainly means, like, you shouldn't go for space on Didi, you should just go for Conquest, and that's that, pretty much. 
Um, anyway, let's let's look at what they're gonna do. So here's their initial starting text. So the Immortal AI is Immortal AI. They're not very scary. They just start with one city. Yeah, they have a worker, but 20% discount and their research rate is fairly normal. Okay, well, Suleiman, all right. Well, maybe he's a bit faster. I guess when they go for Animal Husbandry at the start, they do get that super cheap because they always have agriculture and hunting no matter what. So they get double discount Animal Husbandry. It takes the human player a long time to get there. So you're comparing eight turns to 14 turns, which is a pretty significant difference. So they do get a very fast start, even on Immortal. Um, yeah. So that's something to take note of. Also, for some reason, their first unit starts half-built. I don't know why, but this archer is like half-built in everyone's city. I don't know, what the hell is this business? Like, why do they get 12 free hammers into their first archer? Like, everyone has this. Well, he's got like a whole bunch of free turns into his settler. Like, what? This is like a real mystery for me. I have no idea how this works. Oh, another thing is the food. So they only take 18 food to grow. Um, how much do we take? We take 22 food. So they get like a 20% or so discount on food required to grow. And on Didi, it's even more insane. It's 40%. So yeah, there's that. So let's just look at what they do. You see, it's really hard to win the early religions. Look how fast they tech. They get mysticism in four turns. They get meditation in like seven or eight turns. That's way faster than you can go. You cannot win a religion on Immortal and Didi on the first two religions, unless they don't go for it. If they go for the religion, they're always going to win. There's nothing you can do about that. Maybe if you had a financial oasis tile with the three commerce, maybe, 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 but it's kind of rough. Let's see what they do though. Like we're going to look at, we're not going to do the whole AI survivor thing. We just want to look through the early turns and talk about it and see what they're doing. So we're going to skip up to like turn 10 and then we'll do a little stopping point. So we can have a look at the barbarians too by going here and doing element military. I see there's bears and panthers and lions and wolves everywhere. Yep, just what we love to see. And first religion already found it on turn 10, so good luck winning that. And he's, just, yeah, as I thought, he'd farm the pigs. So this is what they do. He's building roads around because he doesn't have mining and he went for a religion. He can't do anything except farm. But guess what? He's only got one tile to farm. He can't mine, he can't chop, he can't pasture, he can't do anything because he's decided he wants the religion. So he's kind of crippled himself. Now he's getting the imperialistic bonus for his settler, so he's pumping out that second city pretty fast. But if it was a DDA, he'd already have the second city and it'd be on to other stuff now, like workers and archers and all kinds of nonsense. Also, the big thing between Immortal and Deity is Immortal AI always gets the first two religions pop up in their capital. The Deity AI will always have it in their second city. So if they settle in your face with their second city and then found a religion there, it is game changing compared to just an Immortal AI founding it in their capital. Because if, if you're here and this is the AI, and he, you want to get the gold, but he settled a city here. His borders will go BAM and just grab the gold really quick before you can even do anything on a deity. On Immortal, you might have a chance because he has, to, he has to go right up to the gold or he has to go here, but it has to build a monument to get the gold, but there's not that much culture here. So that is one of the big things about deity and Immortal differences. The holy city goes into their second city only on deity. Um, for the first two religions. I think that really makes a big difference in like land claiming and really helps them get big and scary. Like this panther's ugly face here. Um, so I can see here they're wasting time racing for religions, all of them are being idiots. So Pakal's going for polytheism. He's, but he's, look, at, look at this guy, it's 10 turns into the game. Is there any mind his gold and farmed his corn like this guy's not wasting any time now i don't know what he's doing probably gonna go farm down here or something but wow this is what i mean even on a model they get a real kick start like you don't get this kind of setup yourself until turn 25 he's already got it like turn 10 so he's like 15 turns ahead of you and he's onto a settler straight away at size three he's already got size three capital and building a settler so yeah they really do have a fast start now, they do stupid stuff, which we can laugh at later, like Willem doing a size 1 settler. Yeah. 
Um, Darius, so is three settler, so they all do different stuff, but they do tend to go for very early settlers on this difficulty. They don't, so because they start with a worker, I guess it's in their programming that, aha, we start with a worker. We do not need to build another worker. Let's build a settler first. And maybe they try to balance their cities with workers or something like that. It could be like that because on Didi you will see they start with two cities and then one city will build a worker, the other city will build a settler. And then they go for like three set three cities with two workers or something like that. But here it's like, okay, we have our worker. We're going to go straight away to building a settler. So they do get their second city out as fast as possible. And 99% of the time, the immortal AI will beat you to their second city before you can get your second city. Because you have to build a worker first and then a settler. You don't go for size one settler usually. Now, I guess you could and then you could like keep up with them. But yeah, then you don't have a worker and life sucks. Um, some leaders like Charlemagne are going settler first because you have horrible stunning checks and your imperialistic is okay. So that's one way to keep up and do stuff. Anyway, let's um, play some more turns. So we can see they're going mysticism, animal husbandry and stuff. Some of the leaders that went wheel early or start with the wheel are building a bunch of roads. So turn 15, we've got Hinduism and Mittal. But again, it's not in the second city, which is what the DD AI is going to get. And now they're researching wheel. Now here's the thing, the DD AI get the wheel for free. So these guys wouldn't have to waste like seven or eight turns researching the wheel. They just get it handed to them for free. So that's like another seven or eight turns of early teching saved, which is kind of a big deal. It means they get bronze working seven or eight turns earlier. It means they hook up metal seven or eight turns earlier. It means they get to writing seven or eight turns earlier. That is a big deal. And it all adds up. So we're already seeing some of these bastards put their second cities down, mainly the imperialistic people. So turn 19, it's got two cities. Like you cannot do that as the human player unless you start on a plains hill and work a... Unless you start on like, I don't know, a three hammer tile, you work a three hammer forest and you're imperialistic. Maybe you'll get the seller out before that, but this is what I mean. He's all right, so he's now got animal husbandry and he's finally building a pasture on that. But he's hooked up these two and he'll hook up that. He's going for monument in his second city because he went for a, a religion and failed, I think. But yeah, and now they're going stuff like masonry already because they can go for masonry. While the human play can't really go for masonry this early unless you have good starting techs because it means skipping other stuff like mysticism, it means skipping archery, it means skipping animal husbandry. If you want to go for an early Great Wall, you have to skip a lot of stuff. But the AI doesn't really sacrifice much. Okay, look at this idiot. He's going for another religion because it's stupid Pakal. That's what he does. But yeah, look at all the stuff he has. Like a human player would only have two extra techs right now. Like, if I turned on research, I w no, I would only have one extra tech right now. I would have finished animal husbandry and I'd be like halfway through mining, okay? But yeah, these bastards... Yeah, I would have finished down my husband's dream and be halfway through mining or something. But look at look at the way these bastards can go. You know, they, they they just get everything. So yeah, it's kind of rough. Okay, so he's gonna go found his religion because that's what the prick does. Wheel Willem and stuff are going for the wheel, and a bunch of people have put down their new cities. So the nice thing is I have the bug mod, so I can actually see immediately when they settle new cities. So here's the kind of stuff they'd choose on their second cities if we're curious about that. Why don't we take a quick look? Willem making use of his creative trait and he's going to grab that and that so, and a bunch of floodplains. It's a really nice second city. He'll also get that in 50 turns. So not too bad. He's already got iron here actually. He's got double iron. What a prick. Shaka. Shaka's also on the move. Despite a slow start, you know, he farms his floodplains. He's doing, he's doing what he can with his start. Not bad. Got the pasture. He's probably... He's not beelining bronze working. I don't know why not. Uh, it's rare to see Shaka not be line bronze working. What did he do? He went fishing, and now he's gone, ah, right, you know what? I'm expansive. Let's get our cheap granaries. He's actually pretty smart sometimes. So he knows what he's doing this game, apparently. He's going for a plains cow here, which is not the best, but... What else would you do with the crappy land? I guess the triple gems, but you need iron working for that. <clears throat> so Justinian, yeah, he's an imperialistic bastard. He did his early settler. And he went way down here, and he's building a monument. Now, if there was DDAI, this would be a holy city already, and it would have grabbed all of this stuff around it. So, yeah, won't go on and on about that. But, yeah, he's hooked his pig up, and that's about it. He built a, a nice monorail thing here, a road in a circle in his empire. Okay, dude, 
You do what you want. So Pakao has no wheel tech yet. Um, DDAI would start with the wheel, so he would have had all this stuff connected as well. And also the DDAI improved tiles uh, a lot faster than Immortal. So Immortal AI get a bonus, a 20% faster tile improvements. DDAI get a 40% bonus. So you imagine yourself as the human player. Now switch into Surfton. Yeah, so if you're in Surfton, that's how fast the DDAI regularly improves their tiles, pretty much. Might even be faster. But it's pretty crazy. You get a 50% bonus, but they get a 50%... No, you get a 50% bonus, but they get a 40% discount. So you have to look at it that way. Yeah, so you're multiplying how fast you do it by like 1.5, but they're multiplying how much long it takes by 0 0.6. It's kind of hard to explain, but they actually have the edge on you. You, you aren't faster than them. Even with Surfdom, they're still faster than you. That's, yeah, that's hard to explain, but math. It's the other side of the equation, pretty much. Um, okay, so we'll, um, so Darius is an idiot, but he is expanding. Uh, he's farmed his floodplains. He's got a lot of food in here, and like, look at how fast he's growing. He's going to be growing really, really fast with this kind of capital. And he looks like he's going to go right here for the stuff. And yeah, Suleiman, he's doing his stuff. So they're all at like two cities, pretty much. They're about to be at two cities in one or two turns. Well, Shaka is going on an adventure, apparently. And I don't know what Pakal's doing. Pakal? He's going over here. Okay, not a bad spot. Shaka! Alright, he's seen the gems and he's gone, Oh, wait! I want gems! Let's get the gems, guys! Where is he going? <laughs> Shaka? Okay. Nice city, dude. Yeah, um, I don't know about this. No food, no culture, can't do anything until ironworking, but okay. Look, he's still getting really fast growth and granary anyway. He's growing in eight turns, which is what the human player would grow in if they're working a three food tile. And he's getting that granary in 11 turns because, for one, he's expensive, but he's also got gets a free discount on buildings, because that's how the difficulty works. They get 20% discount. So basically, you take 20% off uh, 60 hammers, which is what granary costs, so it's 48. And then you're halving that because it's expensive. So they stack multiplicatively instead of addi additively. They stack multiplicatively, so it's like a huge bonus. He gets granaries for 24 hammers. It's, it's insane. And just, yeah, we're just chilling over there. So let's let's see like what's going on here. I want to get up to like I don't know one AD and then try it on DD or something. So they're going bronze working and stuff now. Anyone got bronze working yet? No, you see here it's the DDAO would probably have bronze working by now. At turn fifty we'll stop and look at their researchers too. So Justinian first bronze working, good on him. And they're still at like two or three cities. They're really tame on the expansion. It's like 40 turns and most of them only got two cities. Maybe they're working on their third. So Justinian on two cities. Does he have a third city going anywhere? No, he does not. So he's just inclined. Uh, he's working on one. But I mean, you can keep up with this as a human player. You, you can do that. You can do two cities, 2400 BC and be on your third one for 2000 BC. You can do that. So it's really not hard, not too hard to catch up. Now, Pakal's done a nice thing here. He's skipped animal husbandry, but he mined his sheep. Uh, looks like he did get animal husbandry and improved this, but the mine on that tile's a pretty smart idea. I like that. Now he's getting worker, worker settler here, but they also don't get a huge bonus for settlers for whatever reason. I don't know why, but their settlers are only six hammers cheaper. He's also pumping out the missionaries. Look at this bastard. Holy city here, holy city here. Yeah, that's what he does. Uh, Suleiman is a heavy expander, so he's expanding. Who would have thought? Uh, he's only at three cities, though. Like, you know, We'll see Suleiman on Didi and compare that. Anyway, let's keep going and do a check-off at uh, turn 50. We'll also be able to see if they start plotting really easily, so that'll be fun. Alright, so at turn 50, here's our settler. Let's have a look what they're doing. So, Shaka did get a three... So, they're all at three cities, apart from Willem. But three cities, two thousand BC. You can beat this, or you can keep up with it. Rather, as the human player, it's not impossible. It's not even that hard. 
So Shaka, he's got three cities. I mean, he's already getting granaries out, so he's he probably still a little bit of ahead of the player would be. He's building a settler in here. All right, buddy. I guess the mine will help, but uh, he he has realised he needs iron working, so that's good. And Willem, I don't know what Willem's. Doing. He's running around with his settler. He went down there, and it looks like he went back. I don't know. Willem's an idiot sometimes. Oh, he's really <laughs> okay. He's, uh, being stupid. Okay, yeah. Could just whip the granary, but he'd rather slow build it and not work his food. All right. Darius is having happiness issues and he's working garbage tiles. Also, it looks like they're having barbarian problems, maybe. Not sure. He's already pumping out his cottages, though, so financial cottages coming out. Suleiman's looking pretty strong. That's not a bad capital. A lot of hammers in there. He might build some early wonders. Did anyone build any wonders? Oh, yeah, he built Stonehenge in there. Oh, pretty good. Not bad. Um, Stonehenge is usually not beneficial for the player to do on either Immortal or Didi. I mean, you can kind of get away with it on Immortal, but it cripples your expansion really badly because it's 120 hammers, and that's basically your second city out the window while you're building that. And even if you're industrious, may maybe if you're industrious, it could be okay, but it's it's generally good to build it if you're charismatic because then it actually does give you a really good benefit you get plus one happiness and plus one culture in every city so if i play a charismatic leader on immortal or even in, even better industrious charismatic on immortal then i'd probably build stonehenge well not probably maybe give it a shot it's still a maybe at that point because you really cripple your expansion but the ai can afford to build it very quickly Maybe not very quickly, but they can just afford to build it because they have their second city already on Immortal and Didi when they go for Stonehenge. You see, Suleiman has not delayed his expansion at all. He's on his fourth settler already, and he's he's doing well. He's got his Stonehenge, now he gets free border pops everywhere, so he actually really benefits from it. Saves him having to build monuments and stuff like that. Now Justinian, he's at three cities too, but on Didi AI would be at like five cities easily by now if they're imperialistic. Bacal, three cities... Willem, I don't know, what's he doing? Willem's not doing anything. Willem's being really stupid, but he'll be stronger in the later game as he usually does. Darius has settled very closely. Uh, he's like, probably teching pretty decent. Shaka, not doing much. So we can look at their research rates and then compare it to Didi. So let's have a look. Their research rates are not that amazing. 12 beakers on Shaka, 20 on Willem, okay. Suleiman at 14, Justinian at 11. Bacal at 21. Alright, so the techie boys, the top two, they are at 20 beakers. Yes, they're doing okay. But the rest of them are like between 10 and 15. That's really not that impressive um, this far into the game. And you can do better than that as a human player. You could probably get around 15 to 20 beakers here yourself. If you started with gold, maybe you could have 25 beakers at this stage. So there's that. Uh, they do stupid stuff like waste their hammers building walls in their capital at 2000 BC. So you can say like Immortal, the AI in general is not very smart. They really do need their bonuses to be competent. So the Immortal AI is a bit of a joke sometimes. And look, they barely got bronze working. How many? Like, three people got bronze working. It's 2000 BC. Like, yeah, yikes. So let's just play a few more turns. We'll see if Shaka does something. Who's going to be the first one to get four cities? All right, so Suleiman, imperialistic leader. He built Stonehenge as well, but he's already the first to fourth city. So Suleiman's doing pretty good. He doesn't even have a high commerce start, he's got a high hammer start, and he's really using it to pump out those settlers. So, well done to him. He settled a piece of crap up here, but he's got Stonehenge, so he'll at least get that, So and a bunch of forests, so that's not too bad. Keep going. Pacau going for super duper 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 early monarchy. Um, I don't think that's a good idea if you're skipping bronze working to go to monarchy, though. Oh, he did get bronze working. All right, so Pakal's oh yeah, Pakal's got the gold start. All right, so he's just teching away like a beast. I mean, yeah, the human player, it is impossible to get this much tech at 2000 BC as the human. Like, look at that. He's like cleaned out the ancient era, and he's already moving on to classical. Uh, for some reason, he skipped writing. And this is another thing that AI tends to do. They actually skip writing for a lot of stuff for whatever reason. The religious AI will favor the religious crap before writing, like monotheism and even monarchy. They'll all get that before writing. And then the warmonger AI will all prioritize iron working before writing, for whatever reason. I guess because they really want iron, but 
writing just speeds up everything and this is the thing this is where the human player get, takes advantage of it they get writing open borders early get trade routes build libraries early stupid ai decides to go for like iron working and stuff first like look at shaka no writing no mysticism no 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 straight to iron working in his case it's fair enough because he has all these gems but they will do that regardless whether they have jungle gems or not that's the point i'm trying to make all right so yeah Pikao skipping writing for monarchy also skipping fishing with like a coastal capital isn't he yeah maybe not coastal capital but there's a lot of water tiles he could be benefiting from working two three tiles instead of these two one tiles so i don't know about that also he's not using this tile um, oh i guess it'll show up next turn yeah it does okay so the tiles they work are delayed by one turn just because of i don't know that's how it works look how fast he builds this great wall so he's actually paying the full price the human player pays for his wonders in the early game. But I think as the game goes on, they do get discounts on wonders or something like that. I think that's how it goes. The pair era modifier will affect wonders. So we as the human player also pay 150 hammers. He's paying 150 hammers, but look how fast he's building it, man. He's developed his capital insanely fast and he's got an amazing setup here. He's just pumping it out. Four turns, 32 hammers. Wow, this guy could probably build the mids. In fact, he probably will build the mids with that kind of capital. Wouldn't be surprised. Shucker's on the move with another settler. So we still have Willem. Willem being an absolute idiot here with only two cities. So I don't know what he's doing. He's still wandering back and forth. Is he like broken or something? He's been doing this for the last 10 turns. He's wandering back and forth with his third city. And he's really screwing himself. Look, he's still doing it. Is that barbarian scaring him or what? I'm genuinely confused. As we see, Suleiman get the Great Wall, and he founded... Oh, no, Pakal got the Great Wall. Oh. But he's going to build the mids instead, so that's even better. Well done, buddy. And he got another city right here, so we might see some early conflict between these two idiots. And while well, we're just chilling right over here, um, Pakal getting his monarchy. As you can see, everyone is going ironworking before writing. Willem, ironworking before... Even Willem, with creative libraries, still prioritizes ironworking before library. That is pretty interesting. Darius also... Darius, you, you think he'd go early libraries, but no, 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 no. Iron working. They prioritize that thing like crazy. Same with Justinian. Just about everyone is going to be going iron working first. So Shuckers, despite skipping half the mysticism stuff and fishing, he has gotten iron working the first. And he will... He's also got a settler in here. Maybe he wants that gold. So we got the barbarians forming up. Where, oh, oh, look at that. I was supposed to start right next to Shaka. How about that, then? Fantastic. Would have been a fun game. I oh, know. Um, so Shaka will probably clear this out, but his stupid workers are busy building a road here, and they're probably set to finish that road before they do anything else. Like, the way they... The road, they... They automate their workers from the start, pretty much, and the worker will go, right, I need to build a road here, and I'm going to build that road no matter what, and then I will do other stuff. So he will just finish building his road and then he will farm that after building the road. That's usually how it goes. So I don't know what Willem's doing. Maybe he's finally moving out now. Okay, Willem, good job. You settled in Darius's face and you're going to get your pigs. Whoa, what's going on here, Willem? Oh my god, he could lose his city while he builds the oracle. Whoa! I think he whipped a guy. Yeah, that archer went a different direction. He must have whipped another archer here. Wow. He's losing his tiles, though. He saved his city, but wow, he's losing his tiles. What a friggin' idiot. Yeah, Willem's a prick. There's someone on my channel that really hates Willem even more than I do, so... Hope you're enjoying that. <laughs> well, Justinian nearly lost his city, too. He's got an archer at 1.8 health. If there was a second barb archer, that could have taken it. So, interesting. He's on the move up here. So, there was one game I played, I can't remember which leader, but we had Frederick lose his capital to Barbarian Spearman or something, so... And that was on Immortal, so it is very possible the Barbarians can take the AI cities. Now, the AI gets a 40% bonus and they start with three archers on this difficulty level, but... Somehow, they still screw up and lose their cities. Mm, yep. I guess if you get two spears and an archer at the same time, you know, two archers could die to that, maybe. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at Shaka here. But Shaka's on a hill with two archers. Uh, these guys are just going to all explode on that. So, yeah, but the hordes of barbarians. That, the, yeah, the AI does have to deal with barbarians. Here's the thing also. These, these archers are programmed to city defend. So they will probably not attack these warriors and just let them freely pillage. 
or maybe not. No, the warrior is suicided in the city. But they're letting this one just freely pillage because they're they're ordered to defend the city. Unit AI city defense. So that's something interesting to look at. Also, he's wasting time on this crap. Yeah, Willem's an idiot sometimes. Darius is expanding. Darius is doing what he needs to do. He's also getting owned by these barbarians apparently. I think he tried to attack the warrior and died. And they're just wrecking him now. Interesting. There's a barb city here with some stuff, and you can see the AI loves to just stack all their archers outside the barb city because they're too scared to attack the city. So they just stack the units outside on a hill or in a forest and just sit there until someone comes along, and then they all feeding frenzy on it basically together. That's how it goes. Yep, the barbs have taken over my original starting spot. It looks like good for them. Shuckers on the move here, so let's let's play some more turns and see how long it takes for someone to start plotting and then compare it to DT. Suleiman did indeed build the mids as Shaka gets the Oracle, so we can look at the wonder dates here. So an immortal, you know, you have even though Suleiman had an awesome capital, that's still a pretty late pyramid. 1160 BC, like you can very easily do that as yourself, like. Typically, I get mids around 1400 or 1300 BC if I have stone and if I push, maybe earlier, maybe 1500 or 1600 BC if I'm on the ball. But I usually get mids around 1400 BC if I have stone and I go for them and I'm not industrious. So that's my usual mid state. So even though he's got stone and he's got an awesome capital, you can very easily beat them to the mids. It's not a problem. Same with Oracle. Oracle, the exact same thing, like 1200 BC. Does he have marble? Okay, no, but the Oracle... Oh, yes, he does. He has marble, and he still built that pretty darn late. Like, 1200 BC Oracle. You can easily beat this stuff. Same with the Great Wall. Same with any of this. You can really beat these dates yourself on Deity. Now, we don't have any industrious leaders, so maybe if we had the goal or something here, it could be a bit tougher, but... Or Hyena. Um, but still, like, you can very easily beat these guys to those wonders on this difficulty... You'll see the DD AI will build them much earlier, most likely. Um, so no one's plotted yet, it's 1000 BC just about. And that's because they can't really plot, they probably don't even have metals, most of them. So let's have a look at Shaka. Does Shaka have metal? Shaka does have iron. Okay, so Shaka, and Shaka's got swordsmen, so Shaka can do stuff. And look at him, he's going horseback riding like a little bastard. He's got horses, he wants horse archers now. So Shaka can plot, and he might even attack Suleiman. Now Suleiman, look at this, Suleiman has no metal at 1000 BC. He has, what, six cities, and he has not hooked up any metal. He, in fact, he has no metal in his territory. So here's the thing. This is where, on Immortal, you could very easily Horse Archer Rush these idiots, because all they have is archers. This is where Horse Archer Rush, ding, 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 ding. Let's say you're playing Pakal, you got horses in your capital. Go for Horse Archer Rush, take Suleiman, take the mids off Suleiman, you win the game. This is how easy Immortal can be. Go for a freaking Horse Archer Rush and just take him out. That's how easy it is. That's all you have to do. He has no metal. He built the mids. He has what? Look at it. Look at the units per city. Also, turn seventy-five ish. He has two archers, three archers in a chariot because Shaka's right there. Two archers. Oh, one archer with a second archer coming. Two archers. Actually, no, that's one archer in a chariot. One archer. So it's like one or two units in every city, just about. Like let's say an average of two per city. So it's two units per city, and that's it. Same with Darius. Two archers. Two archers and an immortal. Two archers. Two archers and an immortal, two archers. What about Willem? Two archers, two archers, two archers. And that's it. He has six units in his entire empire. You build eight horse archers and you wipe him out. That's how easy this difficulty is. Now on Didi, you're going to see it's going to be completely different. They're going to be running around with like 20 axemen or something. Or maybe not that much, but they'll have like eight axes and six spears and four swords. But anyway, we'll get to that after. And yeah, you'll see they're really not building many units. What about Justinian? Justinian's one who favors military, by the way. He's got one archer here, two archers here, one archer here, one archer here, one archer here, two archers. Like, they have nothing. He's also got metal, but he hasn't really used it much yet. He's got metal. It looks like he just finished metal and uh, ironworking or whatever. He's hooked it up and he's building an axe now. He's got one archer here too. So, like, it's so easy to kill the Immortal AI. They, look how weak they are. They have, like, one unit in each of their cities. Or two, maybe. But wow, even Shaka, he's got one unit here, he's got one unit here, he's got two units here, he's got three units here, he's got two units here. He won't plot with that many units, he needs a more of a build-up. Now he's pumping him out, look, swordsman, axeman, horseback riding, he will pump out the boys, but... And that's mainly because they're slow on expansion, well maybe not slow, but they are slower than they are on Didi. 
and the unit's only a 20% discount. Okay, now this is something to note. Maybe they're not 20% anymore, so we have entered the classical era. They have now gotten a bigger discount. Their workers, instead of costing 48, they only cost 46. Their swordsmen, instead of costing 32, they cost 30. Their axemen, instead of being 27, they're now 26. Their archers, instead of being 20, they're now 19. They now have a bigger discount. So that's that per era modifier I talked about at the start, and it's already started kicking in because he's officially in the classical era because he got iron working. And now he gets further discounts on everything. That's kind of bullshit, isn't it? But that's how it goes. So now he gets... It's, it's only a small, small uh, difference. Like, it goes from 32 to 30. That's not much, but it's still something. And, you know, an extra 10... In 10 swordsmen, he'll have an extra swordsman out of that, pretty much, or something like that. And, yeah, they also get this on Didi. So, in classical era Didi, they now have... Four, they would have, like, a 44% discount or whatever. I'm not sure how much it changes. It's, like, 3 or 4% difference each era. Um, but, yeah, like, look how weak they are. Let's look at their research. Turn 75. So, we... I don't know how much I would have at this stage. It really depends. Maybe 25 or 30 beakers. Shaka, 28. Willem, 24. Suleiman, 12. But he will have... The, he's got the mid, so might go into rep if he uses his brain. Darius, 14. Justinian, 8. What the hell, Justinian? Pakal, 23. So, yeah, Justinian overexpanded. Made himself bankrupt. He's working no cottages. No, he's working one cottage. And that's it. That's why he goes broke. So the AI doesn't actually pay that much. So if you look at Justinian, his maintenance is 16 gold per turn. Like, yeah, that's a fair bit. Okay. But he'd probably be paying more than that as the human player if he had six cities. He'd probably be paying about 30 gold per turn if he had six cities. Go on to one of my games where I get... Six cities, it'll be like about 600 BC in one of my games. I'll have six cities. Um, you'll see I'm at minus 30 gold per turn or something. Well, he's only paying 16 gold per turn. No unit cost as well, by the way. But he has one unit per city, so that kind of figures. He's very weak. But yeah, 16 gold per turn. But even at like half the maintenance of a human player, he's... The, the stupid AI struggles to get commerce, and he's really struggling. He's not making much commerce, so this is really screwing his research. Like, look at that, 10 turn polytheism, yikes. Um, yeah, now he's, like, actually at human level research at 4000 BC. That's pretty sad. So anyway, let's see when the first war happens. No wars yet. Alright, so someone got writing, apparently. Willem gets writing. No new wonders yet. Oh, we should do the reveal map thing so we get updates when stuff is built. Oh, yes, yeah, Shaka pumping out units, what he does. Like, he's starting to build up. He's got three guys here. He's got, like, four guys over here. He's got three guys here. He's got two guys here, two guys here. So Shaka could probably start plotting at any point now. Don't be surprised. Let's see what they think of each other. So there should be lots of angry faces with this mix. Well, I guess I'm wrong. Only Shaka towards Darius, but... And Pakal towards Darius, but the rest of them like each other. The reason for that is I have no idea, to be honest. Yeah, you'd think Justinian would hate Pakal and Darius with the different religion, but I, uh, I don't understand what's going on here. First impression, first impression. Okay, whatever, dude. Maybe I didn't pick the best mix of AIs, but whatever. Should be an early war happening from Shaka. Surely Shaka would start doing something. Okay, Barbarian city captured by Amaya. Let's see where they are in tech. Actually, we'll wait until turn 100. So look at them. It's it's like turn 84, and they're really slow. Look, they're still really, really slow. Like sailing, writing. We do have tech trading on as well, by the way. Tech trading is on. And look how slow they are. Like, wow. That's, that's immortal for you. Like, they're just researching math now. I'm not taking part in this. Still no red fist yet, so even... Okay, Shaka doing 24 turn alphabet. Okay, Shaka. Suleiman invested all his hammers into that, so he's actually building a lot of wonders, though. Interesting. 10 turn horseback. 23 turn alphabet. Yeah, they're pretty bad, aren't they? Uh, they're, they're expanding, though. Except Willem. Willem's still at four cities. God knows what Willem's doing. Willem's just a failure. 
Shaka built the great lighthouse. Okay, Shaka. I mean, how many coastal cities does he have? I don't think this counts as a coastal city. No, it doesn't, because it's only a lake. So, he gets a great lighthouse in two cities. Okay, Shaka, that's really intelligent of you. But, okay, you're the man. But Kalon construction. So, you'll see the tech leaders, which is like Kalon and Suleiman at this point, maybe Darius, uh, researching classical stuff. We'll, so, we'll look at them at a hundred, turn a hundred and see. So, Shaka got, alright, so Darius... Wow, two games in a row, Darius is the first to start plotting. What the hell is up with this guy? Maybe he's actually the real warmonger here. That's two games in a row, he's the first one to start plotting. What the hell? Because I played a game with Darius in it not long ago, and he also started plotting really early. What the hell's up with this guy? I did call him an idiot, maybe that's what it is, but... Look at him go, he's got his swordsman and stuff, he's gonna go kill somebody. This'll be interesting. Um, what has Justinian done to his economy? Um, Justinian? Hello? Justinian? I think you have put yourself in strike. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> oh, Justinian, you need help, buddy. Yeah, look at this six gold per turn. Ouch. Costing like oh, five and a half, but yeah, he's only generating one gold with this piece of crap. Oh my god, he's actually gone on strike. I've never seen that before. Wow. Justinian, dude. What have you done? 47 turns fishing. He's crashed his economy. He's got 9 cities, but he can't afford it. He's built no cottages. Okay, dude. This is the other stupid thing that AI does. Yes, yes. Let's cottage the plains tiles, not the grassland river tiles. Yes, yes, yes. That is really smart of you to cottage the plains and not the grassland rivers and don't chop away anything in your capital. No, 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 no. This is why Immortal can be an absolute joke sometimes. This is why. Wow, so Justinian... And also, what's Darius doing? 14 turns at Monarchy. I mean, he's planning to kill someone, but he's only at 40% science. He's decided he really wants to build the swordsman and he's not going to work his financial river cottages. Okay, buddy. He's also built farms on all the floodplains, even though he's got plenty of food. He's also not working his cottages. I think he's whipping units, that's why. So, looks like he's stacking in here, so he might be going to kill Willem. And Willem is just dead here with his two archers. It's, yeah, he's checking out Willem. I think it's Willem he actually wants to kill. Could be Shaka, maybe. Who does Darius hate? Why don't we just check that? Darius hates... No one. Oh, he hates Pakal, actually. Could be Pakal. they got matching colours. It's kind of hard to see, but here they are. Oh yeah, he's getting crushed by Pakal's holy city culture, that explains it. So, that's interesting. 24 turns for Monarchy. Man, what is this guy doing? Shaka's actually going to be the first to alphabet along with Willem. Actually, yeah, Willem got alphabet first. Alright, so... It's not turn 100 yet, is it? 99, alright, here's turn 100. 375 BC, turn 100. Ah! Oh. So this game, you decide to be nice to me. How about when I'm actually playing a hard game, you prick? Freaking bastard. You it's just rabbits, making fun of me. Well, you're gonna die, you idiot. <laughs> Be's nice to me when I'm the observer, but... Yeah, okay. Whatever, dude. Now look at Bacala, early feudalism, by the way. Yeah, so let's see where they are in tech. It's turn 100, so we got Shaka here. Shaka's alphabet ironworking. That's all they have at 375 BC. Like, it's kind of a joke, isn't it? I've seen DDAI get civil service at this date. Willem... Okay, so Willem is kind of close to civil service, maybe. But not really. They're not really trading much. Maybe that's why. Suleiman... Wow, Suleiman is... He built the mids, but he's really struggling with his economy. He's barely into the classical era. Hasn't even got writing yet. I'd still call him ancient. He's still a caveman. Uh, Darius, just like Suleiman, doesn't even have horseback or meditation. No writing by Darius at turn 100, by the way. Like, yikes, dude. Justinian, also the same, and Justinian is not going anywhere. He's still at 0% science. He's actually on strike! <laughs> oh no! Justinian on the strike got me! This is what they do on Immortal. Oh my god, minus nine per turn. Dude, every city's unhappy as well. What is, what is he doing? I mean, I, I guess he has a pretty crap start. I won't deny... I mean, he's got gold here, but he missed the gold because he wanted... I don't know, man. He's, he's just stupid.
You could have easily gotten the gold. It's not that far away. You could have chopped your forest and put cottages. He hasn't built a single cottage on this river. Alright, he's built a couple, but he's like it's a bit late. He's got he's gone all the way down here when he can't afford it. Like what what? Okay, dude. Maybe that's the problem with imperialistic trait. Meanwhile, Pakal is just like Du, 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 du. I'm just going to quietly sit here and tech away. So, yeah, look at him go. He's so early construction for his triple happiness building, actually. That's not a bad play by Pakal. Honestly. Gotta give it to him. He beeland his... He's got monarchy and he's got construction. So he's gonna have, like, a lot of happiness. So he's about to get another three happiness in here. So, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of happiness. So his people are... That's the biggest thing that slows the AR down is happiness. So the fact that he can now grow his cities infinitely with all this happiness is about... Well, maybe not Darius, but... With all the happiness he's picking up, like, yeah. He, Pakal's going to be strong this game. Pakal will probably win the game. I won't go all the way till the end of the game, but... I'm telling you right now, Pakal's in a pretty good... Wow, Shaka, what a nice guy. Pakal's in a That's nice position to win. Power of the clay, to make one vessel unto honor. And another Cow will trade writing, Willem will trade writing, Shaka will trade writing. Okay, yep, 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 yep. So Cow going his early feudalism. Justinian still on strike. And look, no one started a war yet. It's turn 100, by the way. Kind of interesting. So on Immortal, you can very easily pull off a construction attack date at 250 BC. Like, only one guy is getting feudalism, and that's Pakal, so... Similarly, in my Tokugawa game, I don't want to spoil too much, but I did a fairly late construction attack, and... The target did get feudalism eventually, but it wasn't really that early, and I was able... Even though I attacked late and I wasted time on stuff like aesthetics, I was still able to... Punch through and take enough of his territory before he got feudalism. Even though I attacked late and I was playing a crappy leader and I did not really play the best, it can get away with a lot of things on Immortal. And as I said, if you played as if you played as like Pakal and just horse archer rushed Suleiman, you'd win the game. So now that it's 250 BC, he's obviously got a lot more units. Like, look at this. He's got three guys in here. He's got four guys in here. Three guys, four guys in here. Three guys in here. So. Attack date really does matter. Now, the DDAI would have this kind of setup, like, 20 turns earlier. The DDAI would look like this at 700 BC. That's the best way to describe it, I think. Maybe even 1000 BC, but maybe not. This is what you expect to see, though, from DDAI when you'd be about to horse arch rush them. It's incredibly difficult. They're very strong. They have lots of units. They've got three guys per city and lots more running around everywhere. Taking Barb cities with more, got more cities going out, they've got like eight cities. That's what like you see a DDAI do at like 700 BC. So right now it would be hard to horse arch Russian, but you can horse arch rush like 700 BC if you do it right. If you're Pakal with a gold start, you can horse arch rush at 1000 BC. That's not hard. If I played Pakal, I could have taken this bastard out at like, hit him at 1000 BC, bang, 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 you know, he's dead and I've got the mids. And we win the game. Just like that. So, that's my take on it. Now, you can't do that on DD, obviously. It's not that simple. So, we're going to look at a DD game in a bit. I want to just see how... I don't know. We'll play a few more turns. Maybe stop at one hour. Oh, here we go. Darius declared on Pakal. So, he wants Pakal. And, as you see, Pakal was not... Wow, he's got a very nice attack, actually. Now, okay, let, let's look at this. The Immortal AI attacks 200 BC. They've been plotting for a while, and what is in their stack? They have eight. They have nine units. That's not really that much. DD AI will attack with like 20 units or something at this time if they start a war. It is an incredible difference. Like you might think, oh, he's only got 20% 20, 20 extra production. But no, the DD AI has like 20% more of everything and a second city from the beginning, it's more than just a 20% difference. DDAI, if they attacked at this time, they would be coming in with like catapults, 10 swordsmen, 6 axes, and 6 spears or something. It'd be pretty nuts. But we're going to look at that in a bit. Alright, so Darius' attack did work. I mean, that was a respectable stack. He, he, Immortals versus Pakal's archers and axemen just cleans up, so Pakal might be in trouble here. I said Pakal would win the game, but Darius is 
decided to prove me wrong. Alright, Pacquiao might be in big trouble here if he doesn't do something. He's going early longbow, so I think he'll be okay, but who knows. I wonder if Shaka's going to do anything. Shaka's got 12 cities, dude. He's just becoming a monster. It's not even the land that I started at either. This is my starting land. Justinian and the Barbarians have taken over my land. Uh, Shaka's capturing Barb cities with his horse archers. Okay, buddy. Let's see what happens in this war here. Darius took the city. Now he's just sitting there. Like, they can't really pump out enough units to just keep pushing. And now Pakal's got a big stack building up in here, so it doesn't look like this war's going to go anywhere after that initial capture. I might be wrong, though. They're having some fighting over here. It looks like they're, they're taking out Pakal slowly. Oh, that city had one guy left in it. Alright, Shaka, are you going to entertain me or what, you stupid idiot? Did they sign peace? No, he just moved back. He's already lost all his units, like... And now pakal has got longbows, so yeah, Darius' attack has stalled out, and he's not going anywhere, and now, yeah. He's slowed down Pakal and tech. I mean, look at their attack rates, by the way. It's it's 1 AD, no, it's 25 AD, and they're very early classical, like, it's it's a joke. Currency and calendar for Shaka, Willem, currency, code, okay, Willem's doing the right thing, going early civil service beeline. But he's at six cities, and he's not getting civil service very quickly at all. He's... Yeah, that's... Um, we can do better than this as a human player. He's not working his cottages. He'd rather... Do stupid stuff. And build spies instead of wealth. And, yeah, they're not very efficient. He's also building a size 2 settler here in 2310. Man, Willem is just so dumb, this game. His tech path is good, but... Yeah, Suleiman currency, like, look at this. Alphabet math currency at 25 AD. Alphabet and monarchy. Um, alphabet, alphabet math monarchy. Alphabet and monarchy at 25 AD. No horseback riding, no metal casting, no nothing. Like, yikes. Justinian, oh my god, Justinian. Did you fix your economy yet, buddy? We haven't checked in on him in a while. He's at 80% gold. He's now slightly fixed his economy. Look at all the cottages he's had to put down to fix that. Holy shit. He didn't do much in his capital, though. His capital is making four beakers per turn. And, yeah. Not a good start for Justinian. 20 beakers per turn now. Okay. Shaka's at 78. Willem's at 75. Suleiman's at 100. Remember these. Remember they were at, they were at 2000 BC, they were 10 to 15 or maybe 20 if they're lucky. And now they're at, like, 100 at the most. So who's that? That's Suleiman. Suleiman's doing good. Yeah, Suleiman's on a roll. He's about to get currency too. 20 beakers. 27. 38. 75. Wow, Shaka's second best in tech. Okay, Shaka. But, yeah, not very impressive, is it? Okay, so Suleiman's decided to get involved in this war. I don't know what Suleiman's doing. Uh, this is stuck. I could be going for Shaka. Oh, Justinian, I think he's going back down to 0% research. He just got another two cities which he probably can't afford. Justinian is not researching any technology. Oh, he's up to 30%. No, he's up to 70% research. Oh, he's burning through his capture gold. That won't sustain for a long time, though. No, you get your own trade routes not helping you. Mahabodhi. Okay, so these idiots made peace, and Suleiman's plotting on somebody. Is it Shaka? That'd be interesting. Oh, here, here's a stack. Oh, I think it's Darius. Yep, it's Darius. Yep, alright, so... Shaka gets another Barb City. Oh, that's my former capital. Shaka, you bastard. Alright, so... Alright, Tarwism went actually uh, fairly early for Immortal, but not amazing. You can easily, easily beat the Immortal AI to Tarwism at that date. So, and look, Hanging Gardens, 200 BC. Let's look at the Wonders. Yeah, not impressive. 600 BC, Great Lighthouse, 1100 Mids, Temple of Artemis. No, 
No mausoleum, no great library, none of that stuff yet. Still really early wonders. He's now building the chicken pizza in six turns. Not bad, but not really helpful, I think. Uh, just Let's see Justinian crash his economy. Well, he's still burning through his gold. Actually, he's doing okay now. He's at 40% only losing 9 gold per turn. Ah, the shrine is really helping him. And he's developed his cottages a bit, so he's actually got a nice income here. The cities are kind of paying for themselves now, but yeah, wow, the immortal AI actually puts themselves on strike. Amazing, isn't it? It's just about time to stop though, and we're going to go look at the DD AI, maybe get up to 500 AD. Let's just stop at 500 AD and look at where they're at. So 500 AD on DD, that's usually where everyone starts getting engineering and guilds I would say. We'll look at where they, these idiots are. I'm not playing this game. No, stop it, I said I'm not playing the game. Alright, Parthenon 400 AD, yeah. Pretty late. Lots of wars happening though. Pakal back at Darius. Looks like Darius is gonna die. He comes. Look, this is Pakal's Peewee stack at 475 AD. He's got seven cities, and that's all he can build. A bunch of horse archers and chariots. Okay, dude. And it's not doing anything. No, it failed. Okay. What a joke. What a joke. Shaka's still not plotting, he's just expanding to 6. Maybe Shaka wins the game, who knows, but I can't be bothered checking. Alright, so Shaka is the f only one that's actually relative, like, he's fairly close to engineering, so he's actually taking decently, but still doesn't have civil service or feudalism yet, it's just a straight beeline to engineering. Willem got civil service and philosophy, alright, not bad, but it's 500 AD, like, yeah. We can do that at 200 BC. Um, Suleiman, he's also got civil service and he's going for engineering, that's not bad. Darius, not doing much of anything. Justinian, crashed his economy, now he's at 18 turn feudalism, okay dude. Pakal, wow Pakal, he's got feudalism, he's got civil service, code of laws, skipped engineering but he's going the musical stuff, typical. I think that's everyone, so yeah, I mean that's, that's the gist of Immortal AI and... Yeah, uh, you can see, like, it's pretty easy difficulty to beat when they're this hopeless. Now let's, now let's try it on Didi. So, we're gonna do the same kind of map. It'll be, it'll be different. I don't really know how to replay the same map and change the difficulty level. Uh, I could probably read up on it, but not right now. So, it doesn't matter who I play, but we put the same AI in here. So, we want Shaka, Willem... Suleiman, Darius, Bacal, and there was one other guy that I forgot. Where's my list? Uh, Justinian. And we're going to go on DD difficulty. And that's it. Same map, Lake's map. Doesn't matter who I play as. Okay, we well. Wow, I wanna actually play this game. Holy shit. Look at look at this. Nice start, dude. But anyway, um Move ourselves into the ice. Make it one ring extra bigger, cause why not? Make sure these are all ocean tiles. Oh, it looks horrible. What have I done here? Whoops, 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 whoops. Can't click properly. A bit laggy. Okay, um... This is a bit too good of a spot to just give the AI. Maybe we'll tone it down a bit. Yeah. We'll just balance it out so it's whoever gets this spot doesn't have a huge advantage. Just, like, make it chill a bit, you know? I think that's fair. It's kind of a too good of a spot just to let whoever happens to be my neighbor get this spot. So we just toned it down a little bit. That's all we did there. <laughs> I think that's fair. Come on. Okay, so anyway. Um... Da 
turn one. So we're on DD difficulty, right? Yep. So now we're going to watch how the DD play the game. DD AI. Now I need to fix the map because this is horrible to look at. Debug mode. All right, let's meet everyone real quickly. And if you forgot how the Immortal AI play, just replay the video. Or, yeah, just go back to the start of it. Wait, Mansa Musa, did I click the wrong guy? I clicked the wrong guy. I am an idiot. What the hell? Well, Mansa Musa's not... I must have clicked the wrong guy. How did I do that? That was stupid. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. Shaka, Willem, Darius, Justinian, Pakal, and Suleiman. I don't know how Mansa Musa got in the game. I thought I selected these ones, but apparently I didn't. I'm oh, sorry for that. <sighs> Alright, I'm sitting bull. Yeah, nice dude. Too bad there's no silver there. Where's my start over here? Alright, well, let's, we'll just tone down the start a bit. Usually you don't see three food spots randomly, so we'll just take two of them away. Same zeal. Reveal the map for us. Settle. Hate to waste people's time like this. I am very sorry, but... Quickly reload to fix the terrain. And to debug mode. Well, but alright, we have the correct people this time, right? Yes, now uh, we've got to play the first turn, don't we? Come on. I'm sitting out bull, aren't I? Yeah. Funny. So we're on DT difficulty, yes. DT difficulty, so we'll see how they go on DT. Let's meet them real quick. That's everyone, I think. Henrik. Okay, so if you want everyone to do this yourself, I'm including this crap at the start, so just in case you ever want to play your own AI survivor or whatever, that's how you do it. Um, okay, so let's just start. So this is DD AI. They start with two settlers. That is the big, 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 big difference in DD, and they have a 40% discount on everything they build. 15 turn ar 15 hammer archer, yeah. Four archers, a settler, two scouts, and a worker. That is what they start with. It is incredibly difficult to keep up with them, especially in early stages expansion. It's kind of impossible to keep up with them. Four archers, two, settler, two, two settlers, two scouts, and a worker. So, yeah, let's see what they can do with their starts. Willem, animal husbandry, and marble and stone. Hmm. Shaka, animal husbandry stuff. They don't have amazing starts, do they? All right, Darius lucked out with the corn and the gold. Pakal, not a gold start, but he's got the financial oasis and some fish and some stuff. Justinian might have a better start this time. Suleiman, yeah, not, not not too bad. A lot of food, actually. We'll see what he does. Look at that, four-turn mysticism, three-turn fishing. You can't do this yourself. No way. Look at my research rate. Seven-turn mysticism. Fishing, I start with fishing, apparently, but... Uh, mysticism costs the same... Uh, fishing costs the same as hunting. It'd be five turns, so they're already faster than you in tech. So, yep. There's that. So, it looks like Justinian doing his religious crap again. Now, another thing they get given is they get the wheel for free on this level. They have the wheel. So, he decided to road here and then start farming this. I don't know, giving his worker a kickstart or something. I'm not sure what that deal is, but... So, it looks like they keep one archer behind and they send two with their... Oh, no, they, they keep two behind and then they move two out with their, with their settler. So, they've got two archers on each city. That's the idea, it looks like. Justinian done the same. He's already built another archer. Holy cow. 
So, yeah, they get that immediate production boost. I'm not sure why or how, but... They've almost built another archer. Shaka has already built another archer and he's moving out. Let's see where they send their second city. So Justinian already found it on turn 4. Now this city, like, it, it, it kind of screws them up a bit sometimes. If the second city is really crap, like this for example, it will actually slow their research down. Like, look at that, 6 turns for the other half of meditation. He's actually researching the same speed as a human player would research, probably. Uh, not you. Yeah, look at that, he's down to 8 beakers, which is actually pretty slow. Because the city's making one one commerce, and it's costing a commerce and a half. So yeah, they pay 2 gold for their first city, you pay 3 gold usually. It's not too much of a difference, but adds up later. What's Pakal up to? Pakal got fishing and now he's going for polytheism, and he's actually going to get polytheism. Because Darius is wasting his time on mysticism like an idiot. So meditation got founded. The three of them have decided to change their mind on what they're doing. So turn 10. What have they done at turn 10? We're only 10 turns in. He's built a road all the way over here and farmed this. Still hasn't connected his resources because he's stupid. Already going for an early seller. So this is what I mean. It's like He's going to have three cities at turn like 23 or whatever. Turn 25. He will have three cities. That is DD for you. They expand fast. Alright, I'm not sure what this is. I think it will get better next turn. Um, yep, already on a settler in 10 turns. So, bam, turn 20. He's going to have a third city. Shaka, not too bad. He's, he's like the, the expanding fast. Alright, so he's building in a second city. It's going to take forever, but... Yep, so he's farmed that because he doesn't have animal husbandry yet, he, and he's going for pottery like an idiot. Does he have animal husbandry? Oh, he did get animal husbandry already. Yeah, look at that. Ten turns in, he's already got animal husbandry, and he's halfway through pottery. Yikes. But he's... Because, remember what I told you? They're programmed to finish the road before they go do other stuff. So he's going to finish this road, and then, I don't know, he'll either farm this or go pasture his stuff. But before that, he did quickly farm this and get a slightly better tile here, so they really do what they can with their starting techs. Shaka, okay, he's put Crossland Farm down, okay, Shaka. Darius, I don't know what, Darius built a road and, yeah, look at that, 10 turns in, he's built a road and farmed both his resources, that's pretty strong. Not bad. That's only 10 turns in. Like, that's a huge kickstart. So they build farms in like 3 turns, I think. A farm takes them 3 turns. Shaka's built a road around here. Oh, he's built a road to the floodplain, then stopped to build a farm. But the city's already connected, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, they build farms 40% faster. So a regular farm would be 3 turns, and a floodplain farm would be 4 turns. And that's pretty insane. So let's keep playing anyway. See how quickly they expand. So it's turn 15. We will just finish our worker now. And these guys are already halfway through a second settler. And a halfway, halfway to their third settler and halfway through a second worker. Shaka. Shaka's just building archers and has halfway through his settler. Okay, Shaka's an idiot. Darius is pumping out his settler, and that's about it. One worker still. Pakal? That settler's taking ages, I don't know. Pakal's wasting time. Uh, here's, here's what I said. The religion is founded in their second city, so that, so that gives their second city free border pops, and allows them to claim a ton of territory. You'll see it in Pakal, and you will see it on Justinian. Where's Justinian? Yeah, here's his second city right here. So the second city always gets the religion. That is really, really strong. Like, look, he, he he now has an awesome city because of that. Remember, this was a piece of crap? Well, two turns later, he gets the border pop, and bam, he's gotten these five food resources here. So now it's awesome. That is what that... That's a big difference between Immortal and Didi. Like, the second city just becomes amazing if they found a religion in it. Um, look at this, he's already finished his work, second worker just about, and almost done his settler, so yeah, you will see them pop a third city before 3000 BC.
Oh yeah, the early barbs as well. Oof. So mostly the animals have already disappeared just about. Only a couple of wolves and stuff left. But the animals all turn and they die and then archers and warriors spawn. So, yeah. We now have barbarian archers and stuff everywhere ready to mess people's day up. And they do mess the DDAI up. Just because they're DD doesn't mean they're immune to bubs. They do get messed up by them, so we can have a bit of a laugh at that. So, how many people got three cities? 3000 BC. Only Darius. Interesting. And it's right there. How close are people, though? Shaka. Right, he's got a settler out and he's on the move. He's about to get a third city. We wouldn't even have our second city now. No way. We'd be building... We might be lucky to be building our settler now. If if we have a good start, we could be building our settler now. But wouldn't we'd still be at one city. And these guys are getting a third city. His second city is already size 5. Oh yeah, look at the food discount. Look at look at look how fast it grows. He's working a gold mine. Yes, he's got a bunch of farms, but he's working a gold mine and wow. It's like how much food is that? He's paying twenty two food. He's paying what you pay at size one at size four. So yeah, big big discount. Really, really fast growth in the cities and yeah, like all he's doing is working a gold mine, but he's like two turning archers. Like, that would be six turns for the human player, but no, 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 he's two-turning them. Apparently he's got overflow, so maybe that helps, but... You get what I mean, he's pumping stuff out real fast. We'll look at their tech situation, and their research. 14, 13, alright, nothing special's happened here. 16, 13, 10, 12... Maybe we'll wait until turn 50 before we look at the... Look at Willem, already on alphabet at 3000 BC. That's what I mean. They re like he, they really don't waste times on DD. He was a joke on Immortal, but he's playing better now, and he's just leveraging his DD bonuses. Like that's that's insane. Oh, he skipped mining. I, I don't know about doing that before Alphabet, but all right. Three thousand BC Alphabet push. Wow, that's insane. And look at Shaka. Three thousand BC going for Iron Working. That is incredibly early. That means he's going to attack someone incredibly early when he finds Iron. If he finds iron, there's no iron near him, that sucks to suck, buddy. But he's looking for it. He'll get down here sooner or later for that iron, so... They didn't attack on the Immortal until like 500 BC. We're gonna keep skipping. Alright, so everyone's got their third city just about, except Pakal, because Pakal is building it though, so he'll get there soon. He's also building Stonehenge. And yeah, look at the Holy City culture. Turn 31. Their second city is huge. Same with Justinians. They already have board attention, in fact. Worst enemy. Worst enemy, that's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> so these two might attack each other. <clears throat> well, let's keep advancing. We want to look at um, the same points we addressed at an Immortal and talk about, you know, why this those strats won't work on Didi. That was the purpose of the video. So there you go. Stonehenge, super duper early. A typical Didi date, 2600. It went 2100 on Immortal. He doesn't even have stone and he built it at 2600 because he can do it because he's got another city to do all these other stuff for him. That's like really huge having the second city that early. Cannot emphasize that enough. Darius is still at three cities but he's on double settler now so he's expanding fast eventually. Shaka's on the move of course. Not really, he's only got three cities. Oh no, he's about to plunk four. So look at this, this is where we would get our second city. What are these guys at? Well, they're about to be at four cities. Justinian at four cities. Shaka's... Oh, Shaka really wants the iron. Okay. Now, he can't cheat, but... Uh, looks Sure looks like he is. He just settled, and then he got ironwork, and he's like, Oh, nice. Time to kill someone. They don't actually cheat, but sure does look like they do, doesn't it? Holy shit. He'd, like, beeline straight to the iron. Uh, interesting. So Shaka did get his iron. Nice and early. Oh, uh, the Barbarians would be coming in now. Let's have a look who's having Barbarian Troubles. Barbarian Sivers over here. Oh, uh, they've colonized my Native America starting area. I see. Are they coming in yet? Maybe not. Maybe it's because I only have one city. They're a bit delayed. 
It's when the average number of cities reaches three, I think. Which should be now. Maybe in like one or two turns. Looks like they're starting to come in the yeah, here they come. So barbarian trouble's going to start, but yeah. People are getting four cities now, we just have barely two cities, so it's pretty insane. And it's just a big snowball. Ooh, look at that. Two units here. Barbarian coming in here. Yeah, they do struggle with bubs. Justinian's got some friends coming in. Pakal's looking pretty clear, although there's one there. Did the Great Wall get built? No, Darius is building it in this... This piece of crap is building it pretty darn fast. He's got the stone, I guess. Uh, Shaka. Ooh, Shaka's gonna get his very first farm pillage. He's in a bit of danger up here. I guess he'll be fine, but he can't really attack. He has to let them pillage. Because they're probably programmed to defend. Barb Warrior appeared to win a fight there when an archer attacked it. Yeah, they do struggle with them. They're coming in and messing. Look at this. Oh, boy. Willem. What's going on, bro? Four archers. Holy cow. Got the chariots coming in for reinforcements. Oh no, he's going to lose his early ivory happiness. Shaka's one city's about to get invaded by my starting position. Nice. Oh, Barb Spear coming for Darius. Uh-oh. <laughs> Interesting. I should reveal the map in case anyone loses a city. Then I'll get a notification. Willem, um, what's going on, bro? Just looking at the black dots all over the mini-map. Oh my god, he lost his horses. <laughs> so they're getting messed up, aren't they? Even on Didi, they still struggle with this stuff. Like, wow. They really struggle. It's, they're really getting messed up here. Oh no. <laughs> Everyone's getting messed up. So if you can avoid getting screwed over by the barbarians by appropriately fog busting and defending yourself, you actually have a step ahead of the DDAI because they seem to really, really struggle. One archer in here. Oh yeah, look at him, Justinian, just Didi, Didi Justinian Oracle. By the way, it's um yeah, extremely early, but that's what he does. They're just pillaging everything. It's pretty funny. So this does slow them down. It's losing everything. Yeah, wow. Did he get the Oracle? No, he's... Cancelled the Oracle to go for Settler. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, wow. They're really, really, really struggling with these barbs. But that's how it goes. It's also the type of map. It's not a Pangea map. It's a lake map. Lakes map. So they can constantly spawn. The barbs are actually worse on this map than usual maps. Kind of like Inland Sea a bit, this map. But I think it would be best for the AI, this kind of map, so they can con they can reach each other a lot easier. Sometimes Pangea maps can be really weird if they start on the edge of the map or something. They can't get to each other. This one, you know, there's always a way to your target, so... Because you can go the other way around the map. So it's turn 50, let's look at where everyone is at and compare it to Immortal. So remember on Immortal, they're at 10 to 15 beakers per turn with two people at 20 beakers. So we've already seen Great Wall and Stonehenge go. Not too early, this is typical DD dates, maybe a little bit late on Great Wall. So we have Shaka, he's at 11 beakers. Alright, so Shaka still sucks. That's because he's overexpanded. But he has got five cities. Now remember on Immortal, they barely had three cities. Now they've all got, some of them have five. So that's a big difference. Darius, alright, so look, this is what I mean. Darius is at 37. The highest AI on the last one was 20. Darius is 37 already. Oh, no, Darius, that's Willem. Willem is 37. Yeah, Willem's kicking ass. He he doesn't screw around on DD. He's a bit of a joke on Immortal. I've seen him skip the wheel for until 1000 BC on Immortal. But on DD, the, the boy's no joke. He's already got Alphabet at 2000 BC, and he's going Code of Laws. This guy is no joke. He's also got mining. So, yeah, that's Willem on Didi. Pretty scary to fight. We always struggle with him. Always. Pain in the ass, this guy. So, that's that's Willem for you. 
Darius at 16, not great. Justinian at 9, okay, he's crashing his economy again. Pical at 15, all right, so really only Willem is a threat. The rest of them, not much different than they are on Immortal. But that's because their economies are crashed because they're really quickly expanding and they haven't even built roads to their cities yet. So we'll, we'll look at it a little bit later and see. But, yeah, I mean, they, they've already got five cities, half of them. Two of them have four cities, and only Willem has three. That's why he's taking so fast, probably. But is he expanding, or is he just inclined to sit on three cities? Uh, he's got a settler up here, so he's still expanding. Selling garbage cities in the tundra, but you know what? DDAI still gets use out of these cities. It's still growing in seven turns, and it's still building an archer in 13 turns. It's much faster than you can build them. Like, wow. Yeah, Diddy bonuses are pretty insane. He's pumping out the chariots now, only to die to spearmen. It's <laughs> unlucky. Where are they at on tech tree? So we saw a bunch of people still didn't have bronze working on Immortal. What about Didi? Well, Shaka's already got iron working. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, Willem already has alphabet and almost code of laws. Uh, Darius is not doing much, but he's got monotheism and bronze working. That's something. Justinian, um, he's looking better than he was in the last game, we can just say that. Pakal, sailing, bronze working, I mean, that's still pretty early, like, sailing, masonry, bronze working, they've just about cleaned out the ancient era at 2000 BC. So we still, Suleiman's a bit slow this game, no bronze working, but he has expanded pretty quick and hasn't roaded his cities up, so he'll probably get better. He's got archers coming in here, he's got a very low commerce start as well. He's got one cottage. He's putting down cottages, though. But, yeah, look at their position. I mean, they're not really wasting any time. Making fair share of units, monuments, granaries, settlers. Still expanding. They've got how many workers? One, two, three workers on Suleiman. How about the other guys? How many workers? One on Justinian. Two, two, three, four workers for Justinian. Wow, Justinian. Yeah, and he's got another settler. He's got... Oh, wow, Justinian's about to have seven cities. My God. He's also on an eighth. Yeah, he's really becoming a monster. Four workers and seven settlers. Okay, dude. So let's keep going forward a few turns. Justinian at six cities. Shocker at six cities. No plotting yet, but I think it's going to take too long. Shaka having barb issues, but he's already... Like, look at Shaka's units. This is the sort of units we saw at... I don't know, what time was it? 1000 BC on Immortal? This is... This is already, like, more than what he had at 1000 BC on Immortal. It's only 1880 BC on DD. He's already got, like, more than two guys per city on average. He's got lots of guys coming out. Yeah, he's, he's really pumping out. And same with, like, most of them. Alright, so one archer here, but, like, three and... Oh, two... Three, one, two. So this is what we saw at 1000 BC on Immortal, but it's, except it's 1880 on DD. This is why it's really hard to horse archer rush on DD. They're like just about ready for you to be horse archer rushed already. Justinian is at seven cities. Yeah, the human player would maybe have three, maybe four cities now. Between three, maybe working on a fourth right now. Fourth if you're going well. So four cities max for the human. Four cities is the minimum they have, and that's the peaceful idiots that don't expand much, like Pakal and Willem. The expanders, Shuck and, and Justinian, are already at six, seven. I'm sure they're about to found more. Oh yeah, look at him go with his two-movement guard with the two-movement settler. Boom. That's seven for Shaka. That's six for Suleiman. That's another, that's five for Pakal. Like, human players don't have five cities at this time. DDAI sure does. They really out-expand you. Alright, looks like he's going for attempt two at the Oracle. <laughs> okay. He could have built it at 2000 BC, and I've seen him build it at 2000 BC, but... He hasn't. He got overwhelmed by barbs and... No, he decided to whip a settler. So this settler doesn't know what it's doing, but he could actually have eight cities now. He's actually got two settlers on the move. Jeez. This guy. 
We'll look at that tech at a thousand BC, but look, we already got people on math. He oracled something? What did he oracle? 1440 BC oracle, yeah. That's not too... He, I mean, he could have built it at 2000 BC. We saw it clearly. That's a Pakal on calendar. Where's a Justinian? He got metal casting, which is not a bad pickup. It still doesn't have writing, though. And yeah, that's what I mean. They do delay writing. No, Shaka, no writing. Willem does have writing alpha and code of laws. Now he's decided to backfill. Jeez. Yeah, Willem is like two techs away from civil service at 1440 BC. <laughs> um, jeez. Okay, so Darius, ironworking. Yeah, they're going ironworking before writing. Even Darius. Same with Suleiman. That's what, that's what they do, but it's just way faster on this difficulty. Shaka has ironworking now on priesthood for some reason. Interesting. Let's go to 1000 BC and see where they're at. Any mids built yet? No, the wonders are fairly slow in this game. No industrious guys though. Should have put like Hyanna here for fun. Willamon currency. And despite that, he's still expanded up to seven cities already. Like, this guy is insane. He's expanded up, he's got really early alphabet, really early code of laws, and he's on seven cities. Now he's a freaking idiot and just letting this barbarian walk over him, but... Yeah. Keep going to 1000 BC. I don't know when Shaka's gonna do something. It's just by chance when he decides to attack, but mountain, look at him pumping out the units. We're gonna look away, at their units at 1000 BC and see what everyone's got. Okay, so this is the 1000 BC. Two of them have alphabet already. Shaka, 14 beakers. Yep, Shaka sucks. Willem down to 30 beakers. Interesting. Darius at 30. Justinian at 44. Well, much better than the negative 6 beakers he was at last game at this time. 25 on Pakal, 16 on Suleiman. Where are they at in tech? Well, Shaka hasn't done much. Willem getting currency and not far from civil service. He's really not wasting time. Darius, Alphabet. Justinian, <laughs> Theology Beeline. Alright. That's what he does once he's religions. Pakal on calendar. Suleiman, not doing much. Uh, fishing and sailing, not too crazy just yet. But look at their expansion. Seven, eight, nine cities. Apart from Pakal. This is what Pakal does. He sits on his button text. And uh, I, th I think he would have actually seven cities, but the barbs are blocking him. Probably has some settlers sitting around somewhere. He's got one just about to finish here. Oh, he's about to settle one up there. Okay. He's also out of room too. Kind of. Yeah, he's out of room because he's got the two barb cities here and then he's surrounded on all the other fronts except up here, which he appears to be going for. Willem's also continuing to expand. So we mocked Willem for only having three cities and going really early alphabet, but he's up to seven cities now, about to be eight. Like, it's just insane on Deity. Also, let's look at their troop count. So we have Shaka, four, four units, two units, potentially four units, four units, two units, three to four units. Yeah, this is what we saw at 200 BC on Immortal. It's what we see at 1000 BC on Deity. Pyramids here, all right. And yeah, they do get a discount. So it's 5% discount here for being in Classical Era. Is that 5%? Yeah, that's 5%. So 475 instead of 500 for the mids, they get 5% discount. For entering classical era, you'll see the axemen are only 19 hammers now, the archers are 14 hammers now, so we're looking at a 45% discount on everything. Pretty insane, and that's only going to get bigger as the game goes on, so medieval era, they have a 50% discount, then in the late game it'll be 55% discount, just as we saw in that one game. So, yeah. 17 hammer chariot, that's what we pay for warrior. 22 hammer swordsmen, that's cheaper than our archers, so, yeah, yikes. Monument, 17 hammers, oof. Yeah. I don't know, Shaka is gonna attack someone soon. He could really go in right now if he wants, but I don't know, he's not doing it yet. wonder what he thinks. Oh, it's because he's in the same religion as Willem, maybe? Uh, close border spark tensions. Uh, he, no, he should attack Willem. Or Darius, who knows. Oh, will keep playing, but yeah, I mean, they're looking pretty strong. They got, like... Three-ish units in each city. Maybe Suleiman a bit less, because he's been expanding. It's up to eight cities already. 
A Justinian at nine cities. Look at him, he's got tons of units. And there's just one turning swords and axemen now. You're not ready to horse archer rush yet on Yeah, you wouldn't be ready to horse archer rush yet, so but if you're thinking of horse archer rush, it's probably it's gonna be really tough on Deity. Look at this, they're just one turning swordsman. Bang, twenty two hammers. Most of that's base production too. Bam, one turn axeman. Just pumping the units out. You're not ready to attack yet, so... A Horse Archer Rush that would win you the game on Immortal is not really feasible on DD. Unless you have, like, a ton of forests, you can get there early, and you attack someone weak, like maybe Pakal, for example. But even Pakal's got Hulkins and Archers everywhere. He's got, like, four guys a city. Like, they really don't screw around. So, on DD. There's a few types of attack. I mean, you can still horse such a rush on Diddy. It's just situational. It's not going to work every time. You can't say, I'm going to horse such a rush this game. You might not even have horses, but you need a very heavy forest to start, and you need to get there quick, and you need to stop at three cities because any more cities will slow your research down too late. Uh, too much that you get to the tech too late to build enough guys in time. Pakao gets his shrine as he dies to the spearman. He's building the mids. The mids are also going very late on this difficulty, actually later than they went on Immortal. I don't think anyone has stone hooked up. Pakao does, but he's really taking his time. He's also got most of the wonders, though. Justinian got his oracle, and that's it. He's being... I don't know. He's pumping out a lot of units. Look at that. A unit every turn in all these cities. They are friggin' scary, dude. They are scary. Nine or eight, eight or nine cities already. We'd only have five or six. Probably five. No one's plotting yet. Oh, what a nice guy. If you chase two rabbits, 750 BC, this is where we might get alphabet and math right now in our regular game. So, sure enough, he's about to get math in calendar. He's on to feudalism. Then he's going to go civil... He could be going civil service right now. It looks like he wants monarchy feudalism first. And he will get, like, really early longbows. Darius on currency, yep. Justinian on theology, yep. Pakal on calendar, about to finish calendar, yep. Not too amazing, though. I've seen better on Didi. It's also because we're not in the game trading stuff around, that does speed them up, obviously, and then having the tech to give them discounts. It's surprisingly peaceful, but... Yeah. He goes Willem with his early, early, early longbows. Nine turn feudalism, so this is why Horse Archer Rush doesn't work on DD. You might be attacking him right now, and he's already attacking feudalism. He'd be a good target with only two archers in these cities, but he does have units. He's got axes. He doesn't actually have that much. All right, so maybe you could horse archer rush Willem, but you're on a timer here. He's going to have feudalism, like 450 BC. So he's looking pretty weak. Like one or two guys per city, maybe. Well, that's actually like two or three guys per city, but you could do it. Like Shaka could actually crush him right now if Shaka had a brain. Um, but he's appear, appears to be expanding in his weird shaped empire. But yeah, it's 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 hard. They're already getting feudalism. Like we saw the first feudalism on Immortal at one AD or something like that from Darius, I think it was. No, it was Pakal. And yeah, Willem's already onto it. While he's got ten cities. No, no. So not only will he have feudalism, but you also horse archer rushing into ten cities. So maybe you could horse such a rush Pakal. What's Pakal got? He's got Hulkins everywhere. He's got quite a decent amount of units. So it might be tough. Yeah, I mean, not too many actually. Only one or two guys in these cities. So you could take Pakal maybe. Yeah, Pakal, you could probably horse such a rush on Deity. So construction rush, that's another thing. In a construction rush... You want to be there like 500 BC ideally. If you have elephants, maybe 400 BC is okay. Without elephants, you want it to be 500 BC because it's faster. You don't have to tech horseback riding. You just tech math, trade it for alpha, hopefully, and then get construction. But um, yeah, Horsa Chirush, probably a no-go unless you're hitting Pakal. Everyone else is looking too strong. 
Stinian has a lot of units. Big cities. Pump one turning units everywhere. It's already building the AP, by the way. Wow. Hagia Sophia. Uh, Suleiman, decent amount of units. Very big, 10 cities. Um, Willem, feudalism, so yeah. Um, you'd have a real tough time against him. Shaka, you know how Shaka is. He's got like five units per city with stacks running around. Darius, actually, even Darius has a whole bunch of units everywhere. Look at this. Sword, spear, archer, axe, spear, archer, archer. Sword, sword, immortal, spear, archer. Sword, spear, axeman. Just so much metal units. Really tough. The, um, the immortal AI, some of them didn't even have metals hooked up at it, like, maybe this time, maybe a bit before now, but they barely get their metals hooked up at 1000 BC on immortal. Deity, it's just a completely new level, so it's really tough. So one leader that you might actually really like is Hannibal, and you can actually utilize the Numidian Cavalry on Deity specifically, because his Horse Archer is a strength less, which means they're worse against archers, but they're much, much, much better against melee units. So if you're fighting a Deity AI with metal, your Hannibal unique units actually will be better on Deity than they are on Immortal, because they won't have metal on Immortal, or won't have much metal units, but yeah, they're pumping them out on duty as you can see, so Hannibal's unique unit would be pretty good for this, so I might do a Hannibal Horse Archer Rush game at some point, if someone can give me a Hannibal start with horses, maybe on my thread, that would be fun, I could play it on duty. I uh, haven't actually used his unique unit before in both of my Hannibal games, so it could be fun, anyway, um... But yeah, like, so much metal units. Okay, Suleiman, I don't know what he's doing writing at 500 BC, but everyone else is already in classical era. As we saw in Immortal, most of them didn't even have writing yet, but these guys... Math, calendar, alphabet, currency, code of laws, monarchy, about to get feudalism. Darius, math, code of laws, civil service already, okay. He will get that before 1 AD as well, probably. Currency... Full turns, Pacal, Alphabet, uh, Writing, Math, Currency. Alright, so we'll go up to 1 AD and see what they're at. Surprise there's no war yet, but sometimes it's how it is. Shaka's just... Well, Shaka's on the move, apparently. Who is Shaka going to kill? Guess we'll find out in a minute. There he is. Yeah, he's over here. And here. Oh my god, he has so many... Look, look how scary Didi Shaka is. Six guys here, seven guys here, seven guys here. Wow, that, that's scary. Like Immortal AI, Darius attacked at 250 BC and he had nine units. Shaka's got a lot more than nine units. Great lighthouse, look at him. Look how early the longbows come on Didi. Thanks, bro, you're very nice. Do not throw the arrow which will return against you. So, look at, look at this, civil service, 400 BC, already going for civil service. Okay, good job. Well, I'm continuing to expand. Oh, barb axes, huh? Nice. Yeah, lots of barb axe men spawning in the ice, that's the thing about this map. Fortunately, we're safe here. <laughs> so, Shaka, I want to watch Shaka. Uh, it could be Suleiman. And apparently it is. So Willem, first longbows, 375 BC. Yep, pretty scary. He's already pumping them out. So look at this, they pay 27 hammers for those longbows as well. So not only do they get the longbows really early, they get them super duper 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 cheap. 45% discount. That's only turn 100 already has longbows. Hey, look at this, two turning a longbow in his capital. Yeah, good luck horse archer rushing this guy. Good luck horse archer rushing him. So if you're horse archer rushing now, it's game over. You're not killing this guy. Look how many units he's got and he's two turning longbows. He can one pop with those longbows. He will have them everywhere in a minute. So yeah, you're, you're, not, you're not killing this guy with a horse archer rush. Maybe with construction and elephants, but yeah. 
if your horse touched a rush at 700 BC, maybe you could cut him off beforehand. It's, it's That's the point of the attack, it's quick. But if you're doing it at 500 BC, that's too late. You're just going to get to his capital, he's going to have three longbows in there, and then it's over for you. So, yeah. Got to be really early with your attacks on Didi. If you can't comfortably attack by, like, 700 BC with horse archers or 500 BC with construction, you will really struggle on this difficulty. That's all I can say. Your dates of attack, your dates of technology mean everything on this difficulty. Getting something, f you have to fine-tune your gameplay. You have to get stuff, like, f much earlier than you're used to. You have to surprise yourself with your own deeds. Like, for example, me. I get really happy with myself when I'm playing on DD and I actually get a 200 BC civil service. That's really good, because I try to aim for 180 civil service. But if I can get a 200 BC, that's awesome. I've done it a couple times on DD, and that's what helps me win the game on DD. But if you're getting 100 AD civil service, you're going to be late to lib, you're going to miss lib, you're not going to get there on DD. And yeah, it's like... Basically, my general cutoff for, for DD is getting civil service at like 1 AD. If you can't do 1 AD civil service, you're not fit for DD. You can do that. Um, also, that it depends on the game as well. I mean, if you're doing an early rush, you're going to have a late civil service. But if you're playing peacefully, right, you're just expanding to six cities and going, going for lib, you should be able to get civil service by 1 AD. But if you're going to go to war, obviously it'll be slowed down, but you get a vassal, so who cares, and you'll be fine. But yeah. So anyway, here's our first war. Suleiman versus Shaka, two ten city guys fighting each other. So let's see, Shaka's initial stack doesn't have that many, but that's because he hasn't moved in his extra stacks yet. Um, he has a big stack in here, like 10 guys down here. He's got like 10 guys in his capital, so yeah, I mean, he has a lot more than the eight units he initially attacked with, but I don't know, he's an idiot not grouping his units together properly, and he actually failed to take the city on the first turn. It's really pathetic. So Darius onto his civil service already. What's Willem doing? Willem on math. They're not really trading stuff, are they? Look how early he's going to get that civil service, though. I told you he'd get it before 1 AD. Look how early he's doing it. Darius builds chicken. Yeah, look now look at Shaka's stack. That's freaking scary, dude. Three axes, f five axes, three swords, two impies, a chariot, with all this other crap coming up behind. Now he's actually looking kind of scary. He's got more coming here, more in here. Like, yeah, Shaka, this is not what you want to fight, not what you want to dow you. <laughs> That's um, a lot of boys. Yeah, look at this. He's already got longbows in every single city. Because they pay, like, nothing to upgrade their units. They pay 5% of what you pay to upgrade their units. So if you're paying 100 gold, they're paying 5 gold. They can upgrade every single unit in one turn, almost. It is insane. And, yeah, look at him go. He's just got longbows everywhere, so he's going to take the Bob City with his longbows. Nice. He's got his stack over here, that's his army. Not big yet, but we should look at what kind of armies they have at 500 AD. What you would need if you're going to engineering rush. So Darius is already getting civil service at 200 BC. So, pretty impressive civil service date for the AI. I've seen Hannibal get it at 500 BC though, just saying. I saw Hannibal with a 550 BC civil service. Is Barb City's getting taken? What's going on? Shaka's expanding. Okay, Shaka's on the move. Did Suleiman lose a city? Oh, yeah, Suleiman lost. Oh, no, that's Suleiman's city. Oh, okay. Oh, Suleiman's lost two cities. Okay, so here's a counter attack from Suleiman. So well, that's quite a respectable counter attack. So look at the stacks they run around with. I mean, they're really not fooling around. They have 10 plus units in their stacks at this time. Yeah, look at him pumping out his units. Two turn catapult, one turn MP. Mausoleum of Metallus, okay, Shaka. Oh, and he gets it. Bam. Oh, and he gets that one, though. Oh, no. It's ugly now. Shaka, you idiot. You didn't leave enough to defend. <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, Suleiman, not kidding around. He's got a lot of city raider swords and stuff everywhere. Yeah, they look, just look how many, how many units they pump out. It is insane. 
And Darius had, what, five axes and four immortals at this time? That's, um... And Pakal's counter-attack, remember, on Darius? Had, like, a bunch of, like, five horse archers and four chariots or something like that. Look at the stacks these guys are running around with. It's, it's pretty scary. I'm only gonna get worse, too. Wait until we see Medieval Era. Should put some classical music on, too. Lots of tech situation here, actually. We should look at their research count, so... 50, 100 beakers on Shaka, even Shaka's still at 100, Willem at 100, Darius at 200, and with civil service already, yep. Um, Justinian 100-ish, Pakal a bit over 100, Suleiman 70. So, yeah, you need 100 beakers by now if you want to catch up. No, in fact, you need 130 beakers because they research 30% faster than you, or they pay 30% less for the text. So you need about 130 beakers per turn right now, which yeah, it's kind of tricky to do, but this is why you go early civil service. And usually when you get civil service, you'll have 100 or so, like nearly 200 beakers when you get civil service, so that does help. Okay, um, what else? What was, it? what was I going to look at? I think that's it. Oh, I wanted to give myself new music. I'm sure everyone has monarchy by now, right? Uh, no, they don't. That's Shaka, of course. Shaka doesn't have... Oh, well, uh, there was a DD game I played not long ago. Which I might upload after this or before this, I don't know. I have it recorded, haven't uploaded it yet, but... Um, <laughs> Shaka didn't have monarchy until like 800 AD or something. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Pretty funny. Alright, um, and that was on DD too, but yeah. So, Shaka's attack failed, and Suleiman resiliently counterattacked and built some big stacks to take his stuff back. Man, look at all those swordsmen, yeah. Suleiman is a big boy. And Justinian is plotting. I wonder who on... I wonder if it's on Pakal. It may very well be Pakal. Let's see the type of stack Justinian attacks with. Shaka indeed builds the Mazalima Mazalos. Nice. How are the wonders looking? Byzantium and Maya and a little bit of Persia and then Shaka building that. Pyramids, Great Lighthouse, so not too impressive dates. If, he's, if we put Hyanna in the game, we'd have some pretty insane wonder dates. He's the best wonder builder in the game. Justinian is on the move or what? Oh, it looks like he's going up here. Darius finally adopts bureaucracy like an idiot. When he had civil service like 10 turns ago. Okay. No, they made peace. Shaka realized he screwed that one up. So, what was the point of that, Shaka? No, Justinian on Darius. Alright, so here's Justinian's attack stack. Not that much more than Immortal, but it does have catapults in it. And he's already got longbows too. Both of them have longbows already. Yeah, 100 AD. You can't be attacking now. So if you're attacking at this time, it's a no-go on DD. Um, you do not construction rush anywhere near this time. They Everyone will have longbows already. Even Shaka's on to it and Suleiman, who had a war. So, yeah. You have to attack... <laughs> well before 1 AD on DD if you don't want to run into longbows. Longbows, yeah. You see the first longbows by Willem like 400, 500 BC and then everyone else around 100 BC also st starts to get them. So Justinian is kicking butt. Yeah, he's got a lot of boys. So something I tend to do on DD sometimes is engineering rush and engineering rush Obviously, you have a lot more time, but the thing is, I especially love to do it on Immortal. 
Engineering rushing on Immortal is so much easier than Didi because on Didi they will have castles and knights by the time you attack them, so you have to prepare for that. But you do have engineering rush is viable until rifling, pretty much. Um, yeah, if they have grenadiers and cannons, it can hurt or cuirassiers, but it's not the end of the world. I have dealt with the DDAI with those grenadiers, cannons, and cuirassiers before with medieval troops, and I've still killed them, but it's obviously been really tough. But rifling, you can't be dowing someone with rifling when you're using trebs and maces. <laughs> If they're about to capitulate, you've got one or two cities left, maybe you can get away with losing like, half your trebs, but yeah. Um, but yeah, um, Engineering Rush does work on Didi. You can usually take an AI out, it's just how long does it take, and are you stuck in the medieval era versus everyone else who's got cannons and rifling at 1000 AD? Well, I guess something we should have checked on Immortal is the first rifling date. We probably should have played it a bit longer. I'm going to go up to a rifling on this, I think, and see how early they get rifles. But we can already see people getting engineering now. This is what I mean. Remember on Immortal, people were still researching machinery at 580. They're already on to engineering now, so it's like more than 10 turns difference. It's like, in, well, yeah. Justinian's kind of getting serious here with his big stacks. He's bombarding too. Yeah, Justinian becoming a monster, it looks like. So they're all in medieval era now. Like, they're not wasting any time. Shaka, feudalism, metal casting, probably beelining engineering after that. Willem about to finish engineering at 275 AD. Okay. Darius the same. Like, yeah, these guys, oof. You attack them at 300 AD, you're running into castles already. The Immortal AI gets engineering between 500 and 1000 AD, depending on how fast they are, but DDAI can get it pretty damn early. I've seen it earlier as well than this. Machinery... Uh, Pakal skipping engineering. He's going civil service and philosophy. He's going really early nationalism, apparently. He really wants to build the Taj, it looks like. Okay, buddy. And uh, Suleiman on engineering as well, so yeah. They also trade this stuff around like crazy when they're not all killing each other, so... This is a slow DD tech pace. A fast DD tech pace. They'd all have machinery, they'd all have civil service, they'd all have feudalism. But it's still kind of shaping up that way, regardless. It's just like 20 turns faster. Slimon has declared on Justinian. Ooh, Justinian. Hmm. And Shaka's on the Zulu, I didn't even see that. Yeah, Sh Shakaran. So what the hell's going on here? This is an interesting game. Yeah, should we have a picking contest on who wins this? I don't know. So we have like a... It's a 2v2. It's um, Justinian and Shaka who are... I don't know. These two like each other. What, what, what's going on here? Yeah, Justinian and Shaka versus Darius. And then Shaka... Uh, Darius and Suleiman versus Justinian. Interesting alliances we have here. Is it religion? It's not even religion related, it's just why not? Okay. Oh boy, look at Justinian's stack. Jeez, yeah, look at the stacks they build on this difficulty. That's, um... 15 units right there, with more coming. Oh, he's got another stack behind that of 6, so that's like 25 units, pretty much. Ouch, yeah. 15, and then another 5. No, there's more than 5 in there, stupid thing doesn't keep... No, that's like 10. Pretty scary, they have like 30 unit stacks already. Even Darius is looking pretty dangerous, like, he's got a lot of guys in there, it doesn't tell me, but... Decent amount of units in there. Wow. Oh my god, that's a different stack. 22 units here and 50... Okay, Ju Justinian's already got like 50 units. Holy shoot. He's got like 50 units. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, if you're attacking a 10 city AI at 350 AD, expect to be dealing with 50 units. That's, that's insane. That's... There's really nothing like this on Immortal. It's like 
less than half of this. They're really, really pumped up. No. And Justinian's just rolling right over Darius. The dude's becoming a monster. He's already on banking too. We're not even paying attention to the tech, but he's got he's already got guilds. He actually beelined his unique unit. Oh my god. So they must have done a bunch of trading because he's just got everything now. Civil service, philosophy, music, theology, guilds, and now he's just about finished medieval era. That's what I mean. They do that. Not only do they tech fast, but they also trade like crazy. So now he's just cleaned up the medieval era, except for engineering. And he's onto banking. Okay. Shaka. Alright, Shaka's very far behind. Very early medieval still. Still like classical pretty much, apart from feudalism. Willem, not so lucky with the trades as Justinian. Still kind of back here, getting civil service. Pakal, Pakal's already halfway through nationalism. Okay. Solimon, okay, yeah. So Justinian, wow, look at him go in the tech. I don't know, he must have just traded a bunch of stuff, but he's really running away with it. While fighting a two-front war, and now he's got his cataphracts, so we're going to see the cataphracts come out. Or he's going to move them around as horse archers instead of upgrade them. Alright, good job, you idiot. Where's your cataphracts, you bimbo? Oh, there's one. Pretty cool unit. 12 strength knight, so he's upgrading all those chariots into cataphracts. Oh no. As he storms Persepolis. Don't worry though, his chicken pizza will save him. Oh. He is getting stabbed in the back by the Ottomans though, somewhere here. Clicking on the... Oh, so here's Suleiman's stack. How many is in there? Doesn't tell me, but quite a lot. Yeah, wow, look at that. He's got so many guys. Oh my god. Yeah, they are pretty scary on this difficulty. So, I don't know. I want to see how early they get rifling and talk about that a bit. Ankle bot. Oh, yeah. Not only is that, but they... Look at this. He's like two turning a grocer in here. Nice. 81 hammers for a grocer. How much do we pay? I think we pay 150 hammers. Oh, it's here. Yeah, 150 hammers for a grocer. He's paying 81 hammers. So the next generation of discounts have come in and it's pretty much 50% discount now, just about. Yeah, it's um, pretty crazy. It's like 48% discount or something like that. I don't know. Someone else can do the math. It's not that much. It's not that impressive. This is a crap capital, if anything. This capital sucks. This is such a sucky capital, but look how fast it's growing and building stuff anyway. Who cares? Look at all the stuff he's built in here. With a capital like this, he's made it amazing. He's just built so much crap in here. He's got so much production. Just doesn't care. It's insane. Darius builds Notre Dame. Yep. So, look at all the wonders that have gone already. So, you see all the stuff that went like 500 AD and stuff in Immortal go at like 300 BC and DD, like Chicken Pizza, Parthenon. Yeah, look, all this stuff went well into the ADs on Immortal. Then you go very much, much, much earlier, like 20 turns earlier on DD, even Great Library, even Sistine, Notre Dame, Colossus, yeah. Pretty typical DD dates on that kind of stuff. Oh, this is like one turning macemen. 77 hammers, wow. Yeah, like, look at the cities they have. It's pretty scary. It's still early. It's like 500 AD. Suleiman's... So let's look at their beaker rates, I guess. Shaka's at 70% gold because he's gone full war monkey. 84 beakers. Willem at 228. It's just Justinian at 152 and of two front war. Darius at 156. Pical sitting on his butt, having fun here, going nationalism at 290. Yeah, okay. So you want to be at about 300 beakers per turn if you want to win lib, which you can do, but you just gotta do it right. Yeah, you want to be yeah 300 beakers by beakers per turn at this stage if you're winning lib because they're also at 300 beakers per turn and they're getting a 30% discount, so, yeah. So let's see how early rifles come out. 
Persia's just getting wrecked. He's got his cataphracts coming in. Oh boy. However, Justinian, have you defended your butt? Not really. He's going to hit this with his cataphracts, and he's got a big advantage with them here. They're just going to kill a bunch of guys here, so we'll watch that. Yeah, his cataphracts are killing stuff in here. So Suleiman has 24 units there. Where's Justinian? Oh, did he fail? Did, did he fail? I think he failed. Wow, he, he actually got wiped out. I'm surprised. I don't know how, but I guess Darius just had too many pikemen and maces in there. He actually defended. Wow, he killed the 50 units Justinian had. No, oh, so it's not looking so good for Justinian now. He needs to make peace or he's going to die. He's lost his entire stack to Darius and now Suleiman's coming in here. Huh, interesting. It's kind of entertaining. I, I know I said this wouldn't be AI survivor, but this is interesting. So we'll look at what's going on a little bit. But, so, okay, on Didi, if you're engineering rushing, you want to do it a bit earlier, maybe 400 AD is a really good date to engineering rush the first person. If you're skipping, if that's your first target, you need an early engineering attack to make it effective. So what you can do is you can do the fishing skip and then do double bulb or triple bulb if you're philosophical. Bulb metal casting, bulb machinery, bulb engineering, you can get 1 AD engineering that way. Or even earlier. I should do a video on that actually. I think I've done that before, maybe once, but yeah, Engineering Rush is pretty good if you can time it right. Actually, I think I did that on Immortal as Chalamania, so go find my Immortal Chalamania game if you're interested in that. I did a very early Engineering Attack because I wanted to have fun with the Lange Snicks, that's right. Yeah, so you can do early Engineering by bulbing the stuff for it and then yeah you can get engineering before the DD AI that way and that's how you can get them without castles but you need to attack for 500 AD that's because they all have engineering now or just about if they're not at war they would all already have it because they'd just be trading with each other like crazy so yeah 500 AD you need to have an, you need to be attacking before then with engineering if that's your first target um, if you've got 10 cities though, you can sit back and expand and attack a bit later. That usually works. Like you can do late cruiser attacks and late engineering attacks if you are able to actually get like 10 cities. Like sometimes I do that. Sometimes I roll a nice map and I have a nice area to backfill. Like maybe my Shaco game that I recently did. I had a lot of land. So I just went straight in with engineering and it worked. The target actually didn't have too much, even though it was DD. So. I think it's because they're already in a war or something like that. Anyway, I don't want to spoil my end games too much, so that's kind of stupid, but whatever. Trying to explain stuff here because people wanted me to compare Immortal and D. So on Immortal, you can roll over the map with engineering. There's no doubt about that. You have until 1500 AD until they get rifles on Immortal. DD, it's very different. We're about to see when the first rifles come out. Maybe not about to, but we will soon. And I hope this video is somewhat useful to people. It's not just a waste of time. Probably going to get a bunch of dislikes because I'm talking too much, but whatever. Try my best here. So it looks like Suleiman's rolling over Justinian because Justinian, yeah, the AI does struggle in two front war. This was another thing we should talk about. If you can, a really good way to take out the DD is when they're already at war. They really, really struggle. Justinian had a monster stack. It doesn't matter. He got cleaned up by Persia. And now Suleiman's just stabbing him in the back, taking everything. So Suleiman's playing like a human player here. He defended well from Shaka, and now he's kicking the shit out of Justinian. And he's doing a pretty good job of it. So this is what you want to be doing if you're a human player. You want to stab them in the back while they're busy. It's the easiest way to take out DD AI. It's opportunistic. It's slimy. It's sneaky, but it wins you the game. And you need to do it if you can. So what you can do is you can... Let's say you're Suleiman. You can declare on Darius because he's not next to you. And what you can do is you can bribe Justinian on Darius. And then, five turns later, you can stab Justinian in the back and declare on him. And he will have like two longbows and a pike in here. And you can just roll over him. So that is one really effective way to deal with DDAI, is that kind of pattern. Declare on someone that can't really get to you, bribe in a friend, and then stab the friend in the back. Yep, I've done that before. Very recent games I've done that, but yeah. 
Really good way to beat Didi. Or kill the Didi AI. Uh, the thing is, the tech base is so fast on Didi, even if you take out one AI with engineering, you have to be in shape to tech after that, because your next target will probably have rifling, because you're going to be at war. They won't capitulate for a while, because they have so many cities compared to Immortal. They have so many units that they're pumping out. They think their military is okay compared to yours, so they won't capitulate. 600 AD printing press, by the way, close to rifling. So, yeah. Now they're starting to enter the Renaissance in 700 AD, which is pretty normal. Look at that. Education, education, divine right, printing press, printing press. Look at them. They're zooming through the game. Making peace. Alright, so Shaka's got some backfilling to do, it looks like. But, yeah, look at them go. So this is a, actually a slow DD tech pace as well. Like, sometimes you see a lib go at 500 AD on DD, that's not uncommon, or even earlier, 300 AD, I've seen lib go, it's friggin' scary. But that looks like it's gonna be a late lib at, like, close to 1000 AD, so this is a very slow DD game of DD tech pace. Maybe not too slow, but it's fairly slow. It's mainly because they're not beelining it, like, Pical's picking up printing press and nationalism before lib. And Darius, Darius is going for economics, guilds banking before lib, so yeah. If they do, they can get lib very early. The cow's plotting as he researches engineering. Oh, what a nice guy. Much appreciated, buddy. Put your shoulder to the wheel. What am I want to tech next? I don't know. Pottery. Why not? So, they're entering Renaissance. They usually don't get education on Immortal until, like, after a thousand AD, but here they go. I uh, wonder if they're going to tr all trade around, like... So, a couple of them research printing press. I wonder if they're all going to do, like, education for printing press with each other. Let's see here. Alright, so Shaka's kind of locked out of trades. He still doesn't have civil service. Shaka's just hopeless. Willem um, entering Renaissance... Darius entering Renaissance. Justinian, I think only one guy's got printing press. Yeah, it's Pacau. He's got printing press and nationalism. Did he build the Taj already? No, I bet you he is somewhere though. Where is he? There he goes. Alright, so how much does he pay? He pays 595 hammers for the Taj. Okay, let's take note of that. How much do we pay for the Taj? 700. Alright, so he's actually getting a pretty significant discount. The, the wiki says AI doesn't get a discount on wonders, but they sure do. It's not a big discount, but there's something there. That's 105 hammers less. And, you know, he's pumping it out in nine turns without marble. That's respectable. So, they do build stuff faster than you. And they do it faster and faster the later the game goes. 25 hammer longbow. So, they're at a 50% discount on regular stuff right now. Look at that, 40 hammer treb, 30 hammer elephant. That's insane, man. Their elephants are the same price you pay for chariots. My god. Yeah. The trebs are 40 hammers. Like, what the hell? That's what we pay for a swordsman. 35 hammer macement? That's what our axes are. That's that's insane. Anyway, um, yeah. So, I don't know. That's like almost 20%. It's like 15%? 18%? Something like that, but there is a discount there, and that's because of the pair era modifier kicking in. He's in the Renaissance now, so he's got an he's in another era. So he's done classical, he's done medieval, he's now on Renaissance. So he's got that Yeah, so there's a Renaissance text right here. You can check this with the bug mod, they have little colours behind them. Also just the price of them is like around three thousand beakers, typical Renaissance tech price. Medieval techs are only around a thousand beakers each. So that's one simple way. Also, the music difference and stuff, which reminds me. Um, yeah, so they do get a discount, so they are building wonders faster than you. They are building everything faster, and yeah, 50% unit discount now. So, that pair era modifier is pretty scary, so the longer you leave a game going, the harder it gets. That's why space is not good on DD. You just don't want to go space. You want to kill them fast in the Renaissance, and that's it. Golden Age on Willem. Look at him. Three turn astronomy. Oh my god. 
He does like to do that. I think oh yeah, Free's a unique unit. Skipping stuff for us, Johnny. What's their beaker rates, by the way? So you'd want to be at least 300 beakers now. I think I said that before. Shucker's hopeless. Willem, 400 beakers. Darius, 330. Justinian, 300. Pakal, 400. Slimon, 100. Barbarians, I don't know what Barbarians are doing, but... The competent AIs here, the ones that aren't chimps that are killing people the whole game. Um, the competent ones are all at like 400 beakers just about, so you have to really be quick here. That's why, you know, using uh, great scientists to bulb things, and golden ages, and getting the right trades, and massive beelines, you know, skipping... All the useless crap that you don't need to get lib early is really important. Because these guys go pretty darn fast. Also, not only are they researching 400 beakers per turn, they're paying, like, 30% less for their text than you are. I don't think it shows it when you click on their city or whatever, but... No, it's showing what I research. It's, it's stupid, but... So, we'll, we'll check it. Who's, right, so, Justinian just started economics, okay? So, Justinian just started economics. He's getting it in six... It's actually about five and a half turns. So, how much is he paying for economics? He's only researching 277 per turn. He has almost no discounts because no one else has the tech. I don't know if you get a 20% discount for this line or 10% discount here. Maybe you do, but he's not paying 2,400 beakers for it. I tell you right now. What was his research rate? It's 277 multiplied by 5.5. .5. That's like 1,700 beakers he's paying for it. No, less. It's like 1,600 beakers he's paying. He's paying 1,600 beakers for economics. So yeah, 30% discount on techs. Which makes sense. 30% discount on techs, so better be prepared to suffer. All I can say. You gotta be fast, they really don't screw around. Pakal on lib while he plots war. Oh, Shaka. You're a real nice guy, aren't you? Thanks, bro, I appreciate it. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. I can't do that, I'm sorry not getting involved here. Where's my city or so? Where the hell am I? Down here. Next to Shaka. Working a water tile apparently. Alright. Can't do that. Oh, they're dogpiling Darius. We want to see when the first rifles come out. So you can see rifles this early on Didi. Long end turn here. Wow, what's going on? Hello! So, Pakal still getting a fairly early lib. I mean, well, not really early for Didi, but very early for if it was compared to Mortal. You will never see a Mortal AI get lib this early. And look at the monster stacks these guys have at this stage of the game. 55 units. With another, like, I don't know. 10 in here. Another 5 in here, and another, like, 5 or 10 running around. So, that's a lot of units. So who's at war? What the hell's going on now? It's Shaka and Darius versus Suleiman. And then Bacal's joined in with Suleiman against Darius. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's um this is what you call a uh, ideal DD game because everyone's just killing each other, everyone's in a different religion. This is as slow as a DD game is gonna be. Like, it's actually a relatively good DD game. That's because I put so many different peace weights and lots of religious nuts in here, and we have Shaka doing his thing. But, yeah, let's have a look where they are. So Shaka, not doing anything. Um, Willem is on astronomy. Got astronomy, and he's going for lib. But Cal's winning lib, and he's actually going to lib something big because he's already got nationalism and printing press. Oh, boy. But Cal's just setting himself up. So here we go, here's Lib, the Ding Dong. Or oh, he's not going to win at this turn? Maybe his Golden Age ran out? He still hasn't built the Taj yet, but he will in a minute. 
All right, what did he limp? And he took astronomy. More research, that means. Good on him. Ding dong. So let's see if Shaka's monster stack is going to do anything. I think he's killing Solomon, right? Yeah, he's wandering around here, but... This Solomon stack, but no match for Shaka. Justinian might take revenge. Justinian should use his brain and actually counter-attack Solomon. Then he could take his land back and be back in it. But look at this! Pakal's already on scientific method! And people are on nationalism, so yeah, that's, that's what you see. And they're getting there pretty fast. Shaka's entering Renaissance himself, and Willem's on military tradition. Also, barbarian horse archers have now appeared. <laughs> barbarian axes. Interesting. Willem going for early crusiers. The cow builds the Taj. The cow's about to enter industrial era now. You'll see the roads pop up here. There he goes, he's industrialized. Beeline scientific method. It's actually really bad to beeline that. You lose your monasteries and obsolete great library and a bunch of other stuff. It's such a stupid thing to beeline. But he wants to be sciencey. Here comes Shaka's monster stack. 70 71 units now. Okay, Shaka. He's behind. Hey, look, and <laughs> how much is he paying for his army? Because that army would make the human player be bankrupt. I'm telling you right now. He's still researching at 70% at 375 beakers per turn. How about that then? How about it? With all these units, hundreds of units, how many is there? Does it say? 25, right, he's paying a fair bit, but this would literally bankrupt the human player. Where's Shaka's military? Come on, what the hell? Why can't I see these units? That's lame. Well, let's just look at the military. Why don't we look at the demographics graph? We'll see Shaka. Yeah, Shaka's... Oh, Willem's pretty strong too. But yeah, look at Shaka. It's insane. I uh, yeah that's 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 um a lot of units, thirty seventy we're looking at like two hundred units Jesus. Also going for Chris is, so he can tech while he runs around with these monster stacks. That's that's what they do on Didi. Remember Justinian went made himself go on strike. Well not Shaka, I mean Shaka's doing good. He's got his golden age and his cottages everywhere. Look look at his economy. He's done a good job with his land. Lots of farms, got the windmills, got cottages. He's doing what he, he's doing well. This is not a huge amount of commerce. Like, this is mostly farms and windmills in the capital with only, like, one or two cottages. But it's enough to keep pay for his army and keep him teching. Because they pay way less than what you pay. And Suleiman's about to get clobbered here. So who lost a city? What the hell's going on here? I'm not even paying attention. Shuckers. Oh, so Suleiman's stack went over here, apparently. How many does he have? He's on the losing side, but he's still got 33 guys here, and I don't know. Like, another 15 guys here, maybe. Still got 50 units, even though he's on the losing side of this. Shaka getting Crusiers, despite being that far behind, he still gets his Crusiers. Like, not really wasting time. Look at this beeline. How about Willem? Oh, Willem? <laughs> Willem doing Willem things. Ah, yes, let's research military tradition, but let's not get cum powder. Let's get corporation instead, and then we're going to go democracy after that, and then we're going to go railroad after that. Yes, yes, yes. You go, Willem. All right, so this war did literally nothing. Could have been AP resolution. Who knows? I don't think so. Only one person has a peace treaty with him. Maybe silly. Well, that's a long end turn. What the hell's going on here? 
How's this Pakal vs. Darius war going? Pakal's on Corporation, so they, like, if you get in Corporation, you can probably get rifling at this point, so if they wanted to, they could be out rifling already. Yeah, I mean, you could skip Economic Corporation and just go replaceable parts rifling instead, it's not that hard, but these idiots are doing their idiot things, as we can see. All of them going for Corporation, okay. Suleiman with the Kurosia B line. Yeah, Suleiman and Shaka know what they're doing. What about Justinian? No, Justinian's also in corporation. Everyone wants corporation, apparently. Okay. That is what they tend to do. Gotta get those trade routes. On physics now. Okay, buddy. Full turn physics, nice dude. It must be close to a thousand beakers now. Oh yeah, look at Pakal's land, I just realized. Look at this land, wow, we. Oh my god. Wow, man, that's impressive. What's his beak account? I'm scared. Oh yeah, a thousand beakers, my god. <laughs> You can't get a thousand beakers like that at 1100 AD, I don't think it's possible, unless you do some crazy shit, but not on a regular game, no way. So, yeah, good luck beating this guy to space. I mean, I did it, by one turn, but hey. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um, very hard to keep up with the DDAI. Even Suleiman's still at 200 beakers, so even the total idiots. I look at Shaka, Shaka's got his economy rolling, is it? He's not even in a golden age anymore, because he's only got one hammer on this tile and this tile, but... No golden age, he's still at 400 beakers at this time frame, so even Shaka's kicking butt. Shaka will get a reasonably good rifling date. He's already going for his Crusiers, he'll probably go Gunpowder next. Yep, looks like it. Has no wow, he went cruise his before knights. Interesting. So the world's at peace again, how boring. I wanna see the oh uh, Willem on chemistry. Yeah, he's right, Pical, what, Darius on gunpowder, Pical on military tradition. Alright, well they're all like like Crucis now, pretty much, just about. Yeah, Shaka on gunpowder, what a surprise, we didn't even have to check that. And he's blooding, what a surprise. He's gonna have Crucis in his next war, by the way. Where's the monster stack? Oh there it is. There she blows. 79 units. Yeah, nice shaka. So Willem is going... What, he picked up chemistry? They're just about in industrial now. Uh, Pakal is in industrial. He's, he's, he's just skipped it. Skipped rifling to go for everything else under the sun, pretty much. Oh boy, Suleiman's not doing well. He's way behind. So much. Shaka's catching up, though. He's about to get Chris. He's... Shaka's actually going to have a better military than Pakal. Oh, jokes. Pakal did get gunpowder, so Pakal does have Crucius already. Darius. Darius beelining Grenadiers because he wants to be cool. But he could also be going rifling. It. But yeah, this is a kind of a slow DD, DD tech pace. And you're looking at 1200 AD rifles still. This is slow for DD. A fast DD game, they have rifling at 1000 AD. And engineering at like 200 AD or 1 AD. This is slow, because so many wars happening, and they hate each other. I want to see what Shaka's up to. Right, Shaka, yeah, I think we know where Shaka's going. That's a rifling tech. Wonder if printing press is going to come after that. Oh yeah, look where Pakal's going to. Shaka, are you going to do anything to entertain me? Oh no, Shaka's going for something else. Looks like he wants cannons or grenadiers. Okay, but... The others appear to be going for rifling. Or three people going for rifling by the looks of it. Even the peaceful people get rifling pretty early. Whoops, yep. Look where Pakal's going. And look where... Okay, <laughs> Darius is like, I don't need no rifles. I'm going for infantry. Okay, buddy. 
Justinian non rifling, so yeah, 1200 AD rifling, that's what you expect on Deity. There she goes. Oh, look at him, two turn rifling, wow. Yeah, they, yeah, it's, um, it's tough, that's like, this is slow, like, they can get it earlier, as I've said, so if you're Chris here rushing, you can get away with the Cuirassiers at this date on Immortal, but on, on Deity, you really want to be attacking with Cuirassiers before 1000 AD, because if they actually get their shit together, they can't, when they, were, when they get Corporation is when they can also get Rifling, it's got just as, just as much, probably, requisites, you can see here. It's about the same, so if they're getting Corporation, that's probably when they could be getting Rifling. So you need to be Quirrusy rushing like 1000 AD or before that. Just trying to explain things, because what people wanted me to do. By the sounds of it, so... Gotta be fast with your attack. Um, but there he goes with his two-turn rifles. I wonder what his beaker rate is. Still a 1000, he's not even in a Golden Age anymore, I think. No, he's not. It's no golden age, a thousand beakers per turn per cow. Pretty, pretty scary. Uh, Shaka's like not doing bad either. He must be at five hundred or so now. He's building globe theater, not bad. Now he's down to three hundred, but he's upgrading to his units because he's getting thirty-six gold per turn, and his Shaka's currency is coming out, so he's going to have those in his big stack. Stop it! Go Shaka, give me some content before I cut the video. Thanks, buddy. Has not the Potter power over yeah, 1280 uh, AD going honor. for assembly line. Is Willem going culture? Or is he in anarchy? No, he's decided to go for culture. Well, 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 Willem hasn't gone into a single war the whole game as well. Oh, so Willem's got cannons already, wow. Uh, Willem went for culture before researching rifling. I don't think that's a good idea. Also, Shaka and Grenadiers. Oh god, if Shaka just attacked Willem, that'd be pretty funny. Willem, you stupid idiot. Like, yeah. Go for culture before researching rifling. Oh my god. Oh, he went for Darius. There he goes. Pakalon Artillery, wow. 82 units and another 15 in here. Oh boy. Darius is going to have infantry soon though. Well, not yet. He still hasn't researched rifling, so he's technically only got longbows and muskets and grenadiers. It would have been better off just going straight for rifling, then he could have crushed Shaka, but I don't know. Shaka's running around in circles like an idiot. Shaka, what are you doing? Sterius gets the 1370 AD assembly line by the looks of it. As Shaka finally goes for rifling, it looks like he's on paper. I don't think he's going for education, I think he's on rifling. Yep, printing press. <laughs> Willem has decided to now go for research again. He's on steam power. Looks like Justinian is on culture. Now Justinian's going for culture, um, okay. Who built Sistine? Oh yeah, makes sense. Justinian could actually win. And he actually got rifling before he went culture and cavalry, so he's actually looking reasonably okay, but I wonder how long it is for him. Uh, 100 plus turns because one city's lagging, but the other one's only 50 turns, so... Might see Justinian win this. But yeah, it's like pretty much everyone has rifling already, so that's what you expect at this time. Shaka did something, okay. Oh wow, he vassaled after one city because of how big Shaka is. Wow. Wow, one city. I mean, he's not that big. He's only got one, two, three, four, five cities left. Yeah, wow, I didn't even notice Derry. Oh, he lost that city too, apparently. Wow. Shaka smash. Who's he going to go for next? I wonder if he'll start plotting immediately. 
Silly Mon's plotting. Uh, look how fast he's going to get rifling now, though, because his research is going to come back online. Not paying that military cost in enemy territory. Yeah, 400 beakers per turn. He will get the rifles. Belatedly, but he will get there. He's on, he's on his way right now. And, oh, thanks, buddy. Nature herself, a stupid Darius, like. Of all, the idea of God. Got assembly line, but no rifling. I wonder if he'll go there now. Nope, he's going democracy. Like, this is why Darius is an idiot. Justinian trying to win culture. Shaka's plotting. I'm glad we can be friends this game, Shaka. That's very nice of you. What's he up to? He's also on democracy. Okay. Shaka tricked us. I thought he was going rifling. He went for democracy instead. Okay. Okay, buddy. Will him on assembly line. He will have infantry because he has rifles. Pretty early. Uh, it's not too early, but fairly early assembly line. Suleiman on Justinian. Well, there goes Justinian's culture victory. Yeah, he's cut off. He's smart enough to go back to research, though. Going for cannons now. But Suleiman's attacking into rifles with medieval troops because he's going democracy like a moron. I don't know what the plan is there, but he's going to get absolutely toasted and Justinian might get all these cities back now. Shucker on rifles, there he goes. Pakal on electricity. I mean, basically the comparison is pretty much done. If there's any further questions people have, feel free to post in the comments. I'm just enjoying the show now at this point. Look at that. Suleiman's entire stack got shredded. I mean, Justinian did lose a lot, but those units are going to promote. And, well, he might still have enough to take it, but he's taken heavy, heavy losses there. Let's we'll check next turn. Yeah, he's holding the city. Pakal on refrigeration. Looks like Willem's on culture again. Now that he's got infantry. Interesting how they flick on and off between culture. Yeah, he's on it. Uh, not too... Oh, 90 turns. It's still a while away, but yeah. Not too fast. It's, he doesn't have Sistine, that's why... But yeah, I mean, that's fairly it for my Immortal Deity comparison. If you have any further questions, just ask in the comments section. Like, would this work on Deity or would it not? I tried to, like, talk about the dates, the type of units they have, and all that kind of stuff. As much as I could. We looked at their research, we looked at their cities, at their expansion, what they're doing. So I hope it was somewhat helpful. I think there's really much else I can do other than just do another game myself, but I've already posted a hundred games, so I thought I'd do something different. So I hope you enjoy this. Now we're just watching the show here. Shaka, what's Shaka doing? Shaka's, Shaka's on the move. Yeah, see, Justinian wiped him out, now he's on the offense. You cannot just slam medieval troops into rifles and calves. It just does not go well, especially on a DDAI when they have so much more production. Look, he's one turning calves out of the city. Jeez. One turning everything. Yeah, I mean, look how much a cavalry cost. Look at this piece of shite city with five hammers is five turning a cav. It's five turning a cab with this piece of crap of a city. Like, that's insane. 57 hammers. That's what we pay for elephants, pretty much. Oh, Darius has got his infantry. It's 
Shaka researching education. Typical. Pakal's on rocket. I think Pakal's going for space. Oh, there goes Willem's culture victory. Good job, Shaka. You might actually win the game. Oh, I see why he declared on him. Yeah, poor Shaka. But Willem... Willem does have infantry. I don't know, Shaka. I guess you got rifles. Yeah, you do have rifles, but you haven't even upgraded your stuff yet. Still got longbows in your cities. <laughs> He's gone in without upgrading to rifles and cavs. Oh my god, Shaka, you moron. You're about to run into infantry and cannons. Oh no. How many units are here? So this is entertaining. 93 units versus 34 way, way better units. Let's see what happens. Well, it looks like Shaka lost the city. Did he lose any units here? No, still 94. So they just didn't attack. Maybe he'll attack him now. Fight, 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 fight. Nope. Willem is just going to let Shaka take his city, apparently. Still 94 units here. But they're medieval troops. He didn't upgrade them. You idiot. Oh, these two made peace. Oh, he got a city out of it, too. Good on you. Yeah, cannons. So Suleiman regrets that. There goes the defeated Janissaries that are really badly outdated. As he goes for astronomy. Okay. Suleiman is just a silly man. Pretty much. And Justinian got a free city out of that and held his own. So, yeah. Industrial... Or Ren Renaissance troops versus medieval troops. Pretty brutal. Here comes another stack of infantry. Hmm. Well, Shaka did get the city. Is Willem going to do anything or is he just going to sit there and look like an idiot? Well, it's down to 70 units. He did lose a handful. He had 94, he's down to 70. That's with his reinforcements coming in. Still sending longbows in, despite having rifling technology. Okay, Shaka. Hey, 70 units. He's going in, though. He doesn't care. No fear. Infantry. Oh, look at that. Those, all those grenadiers just got owned by the infantry. Oh, Shaka. Shaka, 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 Shaka. Oh, Suleiman joined. Wow, maybe it's not looking so good for Shaka. Wow. Shaka's now getting gangbanged. Uh, Suleiman is a silly man, though. He still doesn't have rifling yet, but... Neither... Well, Shaka does, so... Okay. Oh. <laughs> Darius just is like, Alright, we'll help you out, Shaka. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those infantry just killed everything that they attacked and won all their fights. <laughs> infantry versus medieval troops. Okay, Shaka. Uh, okay, silly man, silly man, rather. So how many is he down to? 69 units. Well, he's still going strong. Kind of, but Willem hasn't lost anything, really. Well, he lost one city, but he's still got 13 cities. Willem's tough. Willem's... Scary, this guy. He took that city off Shaka, so no, he hasn't lost anything, really. They traded. So, a big fight about to happen here. Oh, yeah, I figured that would happen. Now we got a 2v2 happening. Oh, this is exciting. Oh. This is exciting. Yeah, pick my most hated enemies and they actually make a good game when they fight each other well Shaka cleaned him up I wonder how many he lost but he, he did win that city raider grenadiers promoting yep uh, 48 Ooh. he lost like 25 units there ouch so okay He's d yeah, he, his stack is down to 48 units. Willem is still one turning cabs and machine guns. Oh. Shaka's on the move over here, though. <laughs> He's just going in. He doesn't care. He's still sending in cruises without upgrading them. Oh, thanks, buddy. It is from their foes, Such a nice guy. Friends. So Silly Man and Willem versus Shaka Darius. I don't know, man. Shaka, I feel like Shaka's going to run out of steam here. As soon as his stack gets wiped out, he's dead. Can he pump out enough units? 
I don't know, Shaka. Oh, wow, he he's just doesn't care. He's just going in. 53 units here. Another 7. No, that's more than 7, this stupid game. That's like, yeah, 12 or so. Willem's got cannons. But Willem... Oh, yeah, he's got like 30 cannons in here. Oh, my God. That can wipe Shaka's entire stack out. <laughs> 30 cannons. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is the sort of thing they stack on Didi. Oh, and Pakal's going to space. It, okay, yeah, Pakal, 1620 AD, already in space, pretty much. My god. Not the earliest I've seen either, but he's doing pretty good. He's already got tanks, I think. Where is Pakal? Man, Pakal's territory is just getting crushed, though, because his two neighbours are both going culture, it looks like. He can build tanks, he just hasn't built any yet. He can build them in one turn, and a tank's only 81 hammers for him, which is the same thing we pay for a trebuchet. So that sounds fair, doesn't it? Oh, let's look at their... Uh, what is, he's in modern era. Let's look at the modern era discounts. 36 hammers for a temple, so it's more than 50% now. Um, a temple's 80 hammers, he's paying 36. So that is indeed 55% discount right there. Oof. Yeah, the pair era thing really sucks for the human. Did he just get more and more out of control as the game goes on? So, I wonder if he will take this. This is a oh, machine guns, infantry. He does have cavalry and rifles, finally, and 26 grenadiers. So, let's see if he can brute force his way through this. He's got to remove the defenses first, but maybe. Willem, you better... Stop licking your lips and actually do something, because you're you're dying. Why don't you hit him with your cannons or something? Well, shuck a smash, shuck a smash. Oh no! Shaka failed. There's a great general. What does Willem have left? Willem does not have a whole lot left, though. Only a bunch of... Yeah, well... Shaka's still got 60 units. I don't know. Maybe Shaka didn't fail. He just didn't attack with everyone, or what? Looks like he won a lot of his fights, actually. He lost all his siege, though, so he's just going to go in next turn regardless. And... He gets it. Wow. Shaka smash. Willem. Okay. Willem is losing. How many did Shaka lose there? 49 units. And... I don't know, a whole bunch here. Not many units, actually. Shaka's doing it. So, this is one thing the human can do, is even on Didi, if you have cavalry and cannons... Well, Shaka doesn't have cannons, but if you have cavalry and cannons, you can take out infantry, even on Didi. So that's the era I really, really love to attack in, because cavalry and cannons combined are so strong. You can even take tanks with them out. Like, all you got to do is get steel, rifling, military tradition. You're basically renaissance, but you can take people all the way up to here like you can cut through tanks you can cut through infantry you can cut through everything if you've got city radar three cannons and tons of cavalry they're really really strong units so and i've done it a lot of times doesn't matter if they get infantry doesn't matter if they get tanks just cut right through them with enough cannons it works shaka is regrouping or did he sign peace i think they signed peace yeah they signed peace Okay. Pakal on computers. <laughs> May as well go until the end. I don't think Pakal's far away. Pakal's not wasting any time. Also Justinian trying to go for culture. So it's a race between Pakal and Justinian. Shaka and Willem are both going to lose. Ooh, just 61 turns on Justinian. I don't know. I think Pakal might win though. This is close. Oh, he's got a fair bit to go. Uh, computers, okay. Wow, we'd better just quickly scroll through the next 60 turns and see what happens. Shaka's already plotting. <laughs> oh, he's funny, isn't he? Shaka just doesn't care. No, I'm not helping you if Shaka attacks you, buddy. Does Shaka even like anyone? Nope, not really. He will attack anyone. Except me. Because I'm the observer. 
Thanks, bro. Much appreciated. Get me to feudalism before meditation the game ends, so I can have my Lack own longbows. I wonder no if they'll give me any units, any new units be before the game finishes. Maybe. Turn two fifty. We'll just play it out because we're not too far from the end anyway. Shaka finally gets assembly line, so you can see. Even though he's got 17 cities, he's pretty slow on tech, even on deity, you know. Because he skipped education until 1500 AD, that really came back to bite him. It took him so long to get to infantry. As Pakal builds the Three Gorges Dam. And is on satellites, okay. He's like, what's Pakal's research rate, though? Oh, he went back in on Willem, did he? No, they're just both plotting, okay. Here's Angry Pakal, I think. Oh no, I can't do Angry Pakal yet. Does Pakal even have a worst enemy? Shaka is worst enemy. Oh, they don't like Shaka. I mean, if Pakal attacks Shaka, Pakal would have, like, lasers and stuff. Maybe Pakal could take him out. Yeah. Yes, Shaka's Diplo situation is really bad, actually. We'll have to see what happens. Be funny if they did a world war against Shaka. Kind of rooting for Shaka, low key. I'm, I'm actually proud of him taking out Willem with his cannons, with with his behind era units, He's using trebuchets and cavalry versus infantry and cannons. Kind of like what I do. So he's like absolute zero, you know. That's what I see him doing mostly. That's where the fun is, though, doing engineering rushes against higher tech units. Pakal on advanced flight, okay. Who attacked who? Oh. Oh, it was Pakal. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. Ooh, exciting. He's going through Justinian territory to get to Pakal, it looks like. Where's Shaka's stack? Shaka, where is your big stack? Is that... No, this is my... Oh, he's over here, I think. Yeah, he's got planes. He's got tanks, too, so... Hmm. This is a really long supply line for Shaka. I don't know why you'd choose Pakal. That's, like, not a good target, dude. You're gonna... Struggle. Alright, 11 cities on Pakal, 17 on Shaka. We'll see if that changes at all. Thanks, buddy. Not at all similar are the race of the immortal gods and the race of men who walk upon the earth. But this might be a good chance for um, Justinian to win culture victory. Oh, so forgot to show the angry Pakal. No. It's pretty funny when he gets angry. It looks like he's having a mental breakdown. A Pakal did take a city off Shaka. Yeah, look at him, gunships. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, Pakal might be one too many eras ahead of Shaka in tech, so I don't know how well that's going to go. Where is Shaka's massive force, anyway? Come on. Where's Shaka's massive force? I want to see, where, like, where's the 79 units or whatever he had before? Are they still running there, or what? Cause, oh, no, oh, oh, no, 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 they're trapped! <laughs> oh, you idiot, Shaka. They're trapped. Because Willem won't sign open borders. Oh, that is funny, and Willem's also plotting. <laughs> oh, no, Shaka, this could go down in flames for him if if Willem and Pakal gang up on him. wonder who Willem is planning to attack. Uh, not well. It could be Pakal, or it could be Justinian, but very likely to be Shaka. Guess we'll see. But Shaka is really stupid doing that with his army trapped in there. He should have gone for Willem, you friggin' idiot. Why would you attack someone with tanks and helicopters? Oh, Shaka, this is it for you, I think, buddy. Oh no, Shaka. I don't think he can take the two big dogs on. Oh. Oh, Shaka, what have you done, you fool? What's, what's, what 
What's that? Fiber optics? Yeah, fiber optics. Oh boy. Give me more techs, you bimbos. How many techs have I picked up? Wow, I've nearly cleaned out the ancient era. How about that then? How nice of them. Well, that didn't last long. What the hell? Yeah, Pakal's like, I got my city, I'm out of here. I'm busy winning space, go away. Which is actually kind of smart, to be honest. You shouldn't let the wall drag him down. He's got to win. If it, yeah, Because Justinian is pushing culture. I don't think he's too far away. Still 56 turns, actually. Uh, unlucky. 56 turns. I don't think Pakal's too far from space, though. He's on the spaceship text. He's building the parts. Yeah, well, he's still a bit, a bit of a ways away. Maybe turn 300, he'll get it. Willem Artillery. Uh, probably missing some big fighting here. Oh yeah, Willem's got tanks. And here's Shaka's stack. What's left of Shaka's stack? Shaka's getting owned. He's down to 42 units. I don't know. You're struck. Yeah, Willem attacked him, it looks like. He's got paratroopers and tanks. I don't know, Shaka. Wow. 42 units? How many now? No. 44 gonna do something Willem he's bopping in with the planes as well 50 units okay so Shaka's just getting more units in there because Willem's too scared to do anything Shaka still has trebuchets by the way <laughs> oh, Willem's just coming in here with his tanks all right I don't think that's a smart idea but all right Well, let's see if 31 cavalry and however many infantry can do it. Oh, 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 it's not enough. It's not enough. Oh, shaka, down to 17 units. Oh, no, shaka, this is the end. Suleiman broke free, though. <laughs> Willem going for nukes. Okay, Willem. I don't know why Willem just doesn't attack them and finish them. They made peace with Suleiman. Suleiman's not interested. Suleiman, peace vassal to Justinian now. Okay. Oh, he's just peace vassaling himself. Like, what? Like, why? These two went to war like three times. What? Hello? Huh? What? Why would you accept him, Justinian? Hello? Minus six, you declared war on us. Oh, plus four, first impression. Okay, you voted for us. What the hell? He was minus three, and he took him as a vassal. Okay. Peace vassaling in this game is bullshit, dude. They're just peace vassaled at cautious right there. Like, look at that shit. Should be like friendly as a requirement for peace vassaling. That would reduce the amount of bullshit the player has to deal with. I don't know, dude, you're struggling. Why haven't you wiped out? Why are you letting this stack heal? Like, Willem, you're just an idiot. Just letting them heal there. And he, now he's gonna bring reinforcements. He, uh, he's hitting it, but. I don't know, Willem. You're so stupid and incompetent. Oh, Pakal might win Diplo. Pakal who hasn't... Has Pakal even gone to a war? Oh, he did. He did. Shaka attacked him and then he quickly got out of it. Oh, it looks like Willem's hitting him now. Yeah, Willem's smacking him right there. Barbarian city captured by the Ottomans. Oh, well, Willem's units are dying? Or they're going in the city? I don't know what's going on here. Just trying to get this over with quickly. Just, just, oh, well, Pakal's just shown up apparently with his helicopter. He's just driving by though. He's already on fusion, so not too far away from winning it looks like. I think my spaceship launch when I last went for space was 1844 I launched. Won the game at 1864. I think it was like that. Oh, Darius broke free from Shaka. Wow. I think Shaka might have to go teach Darius a lesson. Oh! What happened here? Looks like Utrecht was gifted back to Willem. 
Yeah, wow. Oh, shaka. I think he got wiped out and gave up. Oh, Pakal just drives by with his modern armors. Okay. Oof. So who's still at war? Willem and Darius? Yeah, Willem. Oh, God. V Darius is now going to vassal to Willem, probably. Looks like Willem can get there through Pakal territory, too. Global civics. Come on, Pakal, win the game, get this over with. I don't know if Justinian can win, but maybe. 21 turns. Ooh, actually, wow, it's going to be close. He's picked it up. Andronople, where's that? Andronople, Andronople, Andronople. He's building wealth instead of culture, like an idiot, and running priests instead of artists, like an idiot. Okay, buddy. But 20 turns? I don't know, can Pakal even win in 20 turns? Wow, it's close. Pakal might lose this. He wasted time on advanced flight. It's going to bite him. He's got one, two, three more spaceship techs to go. Ooh, it is close. Very, very, very close. How exciting. Oh, he's wasting time on robotics. He's going to lose. He's going to lose. 510 robotics. You don't need that to win the game. To win by space. He's wasting time. That's what they do. That's what he did against me, and he lost because of that. Um, I, I had a space race with this guy, and he went for, like, stealth and stuff and lost the game by one turn because of that. So, yeah. The AI is very stupid with their tech preferences when they go for space. Fortunately for the player. I think you're going to lose this, Pakal, because you've got 10 turns to launch it as well. And he's 11 turns. You better launch this turn, but you're not. You've got a lot of stuff to backfill. Yeah, he's still got to get Ecology. No, you're going to lose, buddy. That's over. Justinian wins. Wow. Well done, Justinian. Unless if he trolls, but I don't think Justinian's going to troll this. Looks pretty set on this culture victory. Maybe Shaka's going to attack him, but it's too late. Yeah, Shaka, not looking too strong, are you, buddy? So, it could have been a runaway with Shaka, but Shaka was too slow. They make peace way too easily. Yeah, he got himself messed up when he went for Pakal, and then Willem doubted him anyway. Stupid chuckle. And yeah, look at him. He's going for stealth when he's trying to win by space. Oh, Pakal, you moron. Why would you go for stealth and robotics? You're not even at war. Well, here's our winner. Justinian. Where is it? Oh, I got a military tech. Hell yeah, dude. I can build a freaking stable now. Let's go. If you speak nice. The truth, I've got... They gave me archery as well, didn't they? Hell yeah. Right, so who wants to give me horses now? I would like to build a horse archer. Thank you very much. Oh, that's not very nice. Come on, dude. What about you? Lame. None of them want to give me horses. It feels bad. What about cow? Can't build horse archers. It's indeed a tragedy, my friends. Can build a longbow, though. Oh, I gave myself feudalism. That's right, I forgot about that because of the era music. No wonder they didn't give me longbows. Okay, well, whatever. Can build stables, though. They've technically given me the stuff for horse archers. That's the most exciting part of this thing. Yeah, he's about to win. Cow, you're a moron, dude. Oh, looks like Shaka and Darius are back at it again. No, Darius has just decided to plot with seven cities. Oh. Well, you're pretty nice, aren't you, buddy? Maybe I'll build a library then. True glory consists in doing what deserves to be written. Right, anyway, um, writing, let's look at this. Yeah, no, Justinian played it well. He got the tech he needed to defend himself. He got attacked, defended himself, and still won culture. Like, pretty smart guy. He got rifling, he got calves, he then went for culture. He got attacked, whooped to the person that attacked him, and then went back to culture and won. Actually pretty smart. 
guess I'll have to put Justinian in my next game. Is a seems to be a very talented AI. What a smart person. There you go, he won. Stupid Pakal. There's his last spaceship tech. He still hasn't finished. So he's won by at least like 11 turns. Good job. Anyway, um, apart from the little fun in the last hour of that, hope the first two hours was more productive anyway, and helps talk about Immortal and Deity, and you see the differences and all that kind of stuff, so I'm not going to go through this. It's like whatever, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's any more questions, just let me know. Um, apart from that, I'm just going to go back to playing normal games and try to explain stuff a bit better, maybe. But that's that's my attempt at explaining, you know, Immortal, Deity, what it takes to beat Deity versus Immortal. Like, you can... You, you saw... Like, Justinian was a joke on Immortal, but look at him on Deity. He freaking won the game. Turn 308. So the boy... After we mocked him on Immortal, he's big scary guy on Deity, that's for sure. Well, there you have it. And yeah, I mean, the stacks they threw at each other are pretty scary as well. Like 50 units by 400 AD or something. That's pretty scary stuff. So, all they can say is, get prepared. That's, that's what you need to be ready for on Deity. And your dates need to be much earlier, so... I guess I can give some quick rundowns of stuff, maybe. Um, people probably not even watching at this point, but anyway, like... You gotta have 180 civil service on DD if, if you want to be competent on DD. If you're not attacking anyone, you need to be getting civil service 1 AD if you want to win lib. And then... If you're in isolation, like 300 AD optics probably has to be good for DD because otherwise the AI will self-tech it by then at 300 AD. Maybe 500 AD if they're really slow, but... Usually 300 AD, you want to have optics at the latest if you're isolated or whatever on DD, and then what else? Construction attack needs to happen by 500 BC. Elephants maybe 400 BC, but not much later than that because they get long bows pretty darn early. Horse archers need to be 700 BC or earlier. 500 at the absolute latest if it's someone weak or with not that many cities, but you know, you saw them. They had 10 cities and 4 guys per city by then. They're pretty scary. Um, rifling, yeah, rifling come, rifling varies, it's, um, it could be, like, as early as 1000 AD, but it's around 1200 AD, they're pretty bound to have rifling on DD, so watch out, it, with your cruiser rushes, that is, but, yeah, it's really just be faster and have bigger numbers when you attack on DD versus Immortal, just be faster and have more guys, that's it, that's really it. Didn't even know you could workshop Tundra tiles like that, huh? Interesting. Oh well, thanks for watching. Hope that was somewhat helpful for you guys, and I'll see you next time.